state Supreme Judicial Court and what we're seeing in Massachusetts, including our laws. So a lot going to the policy uh, anytime they're adopted, despite just looking at the current trending data. We can't jump day to day and change policy. It's got to be well thought out and it's done over time. So every time they cycle one of those out, every chief uh, in Massachusetts rips it apart, tries to figure out you know, the best way to implement it in their community, and we do the same thing in Deerfield. I think we're at the cutting edge for Massachusetts. I think we have amazing people. Uh, we train them amazing. Sergeant Brian Ravish is in charge of the field training officer program that we'll talk about in, in a minute. Sergeant Jennifer Bartek is in charge of continuous training. So when we look at employees, we currently have three or four employees that are not being paid by the town, but they're sponsored to the part-time police academy. All three are residents. So with recruitment and retention, you have a part-time police academy in Massachusetts and you have a full-time police academy. I know the select board is aware of this, but I do want to say this for the residents that are watching. The part-time police academy is approximately 380 hours. The full-time police academy is about 960 hours. So there is a variable between the two. The part-time police academy doesn't do pursuit driving. They don't do some of the classes that are 40 hours. They cycle it down to eight to 16 hours. So there is a difference between part-time and cert uh, full-time certification. But when we look at employees for the police department, we, we go through an application process the same way anybody would for a regular job. But then we bring people in and do an interview, just like a standard job. But where we do get more intense is the background stage. Because we do go through their life. We go back and talk to high school and elementary school teachers. We go through and look at social media to make sure that there's no biases. We dig into their background the best we can before a conditional offer of employment is extended to them. Once they're brought on the police department, they are then put through a three to four month field training officer program where they are assigned to full-time police officers that monitor them in three different phases. Phase one, they are totally hands-off. They are there just to observe, watch, and learn. Phase two, they start to get hands-on. And phase three, they are actually fully operational, but the full-time police officer next to them is monitoring every single activity they do. After that, day to day, people have questions about supervision. I address this with several residents that uh, I fielded phone calls from. Day to day, every supervisor that walks into the Deerfield Police Department runs the daily log. They go through every single call for service, including incident reports, arrest reports, field investigations, sexual assaults, drug investigations, etc. All those reports have to come across a supervisor's desk for approval. And if they are done substandard, they're sent back for revision. If there's follow-up necessary, it is assigned to the appropriate person. It may be that officer, or if they're part-time, we may pull that case away from them and cycle it over to a full-time officer, or it may be a more significant case where it's cycled up to a detective level position or a sexual assault investigating officer. So it depends on the level of case. Today, a search warrant was issued for three bags in which 80 grams of a white narcotic substance was recovered from um, a room of a local establishment. Mm -hmm. So over there, they're, uh, they're taking apart bags right now. They're inventorying bags. They're going through a search warrant was issued this afternoon. They'll have to do the return of the search warrant tomorrow, but they're photographing and documenting everything. That was a stolen motor vehicle out of Augusta, Maine. Sirius XM called us last Thursday morning at one o'clock in the morning and advised us that it was located in Deerfield at a local establishment. Mm -hmm. They tracked it by GPS. They went over, identified the two people in the room. They seized a shopping cart full of drugs. In the shopping cart full of drugs was three locked bags. We cannot enter a locked bag without a search warrant. So therefore, the search warrant was issued this afternoon. 
and again, narcotics were recovered from those three locked bags. And that's not a part-time job? That's not a part-time job. That's hours and hours and hours of follow-up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep, that's very significant. So day to day, there's a, a lot that goes on that we just don't put out there. And I think mm -hmm. one of the downsides of myself in management is I have such amazing people that I don't brag about the police department. I don't go out and advocate. I don't sit there and brag about what we do. We had two people in jail cells from that same stolen motor vehicle in a shopping cart full of drugs at 5.58 in the morning with those two police officers in the station dealing with a shopping cart full of drugs, two people in jail cells, logging in 17 property numbers, doing two different narratives. We get a near head-on accident on River Road where the passengers reported possibly near death. Yeah, it's a lot. So one police officer sits in the station with the two prisoners in the cells, with a shopping cart full of drugs, working on still booking them and entering property, while the other police officer responds out, calls the day shift guy in, and they respond out to a 20-year-old girl driving a car that at 5.58 in the morning is a .189 on a portable breath test. Right. She's over two times the legal limit. 17-year-old male passenger in the passenger seat in its mom's car out of Vermont that is totaled at six o'clock in the morning on River Road. And from there, just it just went on. I don't advocate day to day. I don't tell all the stories. I don't say what we do. But what I promised the Deerfield Inclusion Group when I met with them online is every single supervisor goes through every single call for service as Jen will attest to. Mm -hmm. If there is ever, ever a police officer in this town that targets a minority community, I will terminate them so fast your head will spin. There will not be bias. So that's the retention side of it. We've got the recruitment side, we've got the retention side where we monitor everything. You have the part-time police academy, you have the full-time police academy, let's talk about annual in-service training because People in the state are under this misnomer, this misconception that, hey, once you're a cop, you're a cop. That is not true, nor has it ever been. The Municipal Police Training Committee mandates 40 hours of in-service training a year, which does not include first responder, which is a step-down EMT course, mm -hmm. CPR, and three different times for qualifications of any firearms. When you comprise all those areas together, police officers prior to any specialized training, any, they want to go to interview and interrogation school, drug interdiction, sexual assault investigator, uh, anything, on an annual basis are spending more than 64 hours in, in service. I am not aware of a job in the country that requires 64 hours of in-service bare minimal on an annual basis. And that includes doctors, that includes my wife as a nurse, or paramedics. You have to train, but usually it's like three years. You know, it's a cycle of years mm -hmm. versus every year. When I was an EMT, it was 28 hours in a two-year two cycle. Two years. So 14 hours a year. Our mandate, bare minimal, is 64 hours And it's a good year. that we do that. And now mm -hmm. if police chiefs like myself are proactive, you're going to be sending all your people out to additional training. Right. And all of a sudden that goes to 72 to 80 to 88 yeah. hours, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it, it, it jumps up very, very quick. So to say that, uh, you know, once you're a police officer, there's really no additional follow-up is a misnomer. Yeah. To the other side of that, people have asked me all across town, I'm driving around and people I interact with, about uh, post, the police officer standards in training, as if it's a new concept. Mass Chiefs of Police has petitioned the state for the last three legislative cycles. For six years, we have tried to establish a certification process and decertification process right. for police officers in the Commonwealth. Legislature would not give us the time of day hmm. for the past six years. 
Wonder why the whole this is not new to us. Yeah. This is something we've been advocating for strongly for the past three legislative cycles. Yeah. No chief in the state is against a certification and decertification process. It only helps. They want to make sure it's your, fair it's and accurate. That's right. all they want. The devil's always in the details. When you take the governor and mass chiefs that sit down with the Black and Latino Caucus and come up with a comprised bill that they're extremely happy with, legislature completely ignores it and drafts their own 130-page bill, there's a problem. When the Black and Latino Caucus put out a memo in a newsletter that says, please, legislature, refer back to the five core criteria that we recommended. This is getting exuberant. We have a problem. When the pendulum swings, we don't need to hit it with a baseball bat. We need to do corrections. But those corrections have to be well thought out and meticulous. We can't just whack the pendulum just because. So that's basically how the chief stance is in the state. Let's figure out what the best course of action is. We give our recommendations, they're not heard. So it's very disconcerting. Jen, jump in any time. Sure. Um, I want to go back to when we were talking about our in-service training. I just want to give the residents a little bit of an idea of what we train in every year. That'd be great. Um, since I've taken over since 2016 when I came back from my employment at UMass Amherst Police Department. So in 2016, our 40 hours in classroom in service included the legal updates, a classroom defensive tactics, which we go over use of force continuum, eyewitness identification, and fair and impartial policing part one. In 2017, we did legal updates, again, classroom defensive tactics, dynamics of addiction, police interaction with use, and elder issues, Alzheimer's, and dementia issues. Mm -hmm. In 2018, we did, again, legal updates, again, classroom defensive tactics, Tactic, excuse me, violent extremism awareness, police response to a domestic violence and sexual assault, procedural justice and legitimacy part two, which is again going back to the fair and impartial policing part one two years prior, and stress and stigma and survival in policing, basically the, the response and the stress and stigma that the police officers deal with on our daily basis and how we can be um, mentally healthy for this mm -hmm. job. In 2019, we did legal updates, defensive tactics, police interactions with persons with mental illness, multiple agent response to active shooters incident, incidents, excuse me, then integrated communications assessments and tactics, which is called ICAT. And in 2020, we've done legal updates, defensive tactics, animal cruelty investigations involving animals, police pursuits, guidelines, policies and procedures and risks avoid, avoidance, suicide by cop, a dangerous reality, and police survival and mental health. So that's just a snippet of our classroom, which all the officers in Deerfield who have been employed have gone through and completed this training to maintain their certification with the Deerfield Police Department. Thank you. Good. Well, I, I thank you very much for coming in. I think what we want to do is talk about, um, I mean, public safety is absolutely what we're um, making want to make sure it happens here in Deerfield. I think people feel safe in the community because of our police department. So what we would like to do is, um, you know, once the governor's bill is sorted out, uh, I was hoping, John, that you um, and Jen or whoever, somebody can come and we can start talking about what are the options that we um, might need to, to address uh, to be compliant, but also what else we might be able to do um, to uh, the intention, make sure that the intentions match what we're actually doing as well. So, and, and what would be the budgetary impact? Um, it's gonna be a tough, you know, next couple of years. We're okay right now, but, um, you know, the next couple of years are gonna be tight. So we wanna plan this out, what, what would be our highest priority and what kind of things we'd like to do. I'm, I'm just throwing out like say additional resource officers, school resource officers, you know, equipment, what other training. Um, is there an opportunity for us to be a pilot um, with uh, some program that's going to address mental illness? Mental illness, of course, is one of the 
things that's out there that you all have to deal with all the time. So is there some, uh, you know, grant opportunity, some program? I mean, I feel like we are cutting edge, so, um, you know, participating in a pilot would be to a hugely to our advantage. So Yeah, one of the things the larger police departments are doing across the United States is they've actually hired um, mental health professionals mm -hmm. to be on duty with the staff at the time and to respond on those yeah. calls with them, which is amazing. But those are police departments have 30 people a shift. Well, that's they're yeah, 400 that's, person police departments. That's, that's we bring really people good. to Franklin Medical Center. They don't even have the resources. I and know. then there's not even a mental health bed available. And it breaks your heart. Jen and I bring people up all the time and it's a cycle. Well, this right is back and the next day they're like, oh my God, we're, we're getting a call from so-and-so again. This is kind of where I'd like to address that, um, you know, there's talk about kind of shifting the way we police and mm -hmm. how we get different um, resources to that need. You never really know what that call is going to be, right? No. I mean, here you are booking people and you've got a head on mm -hmm. crash or it could, could very well have been a um, domestic abuse. It could, all kinds of different mm -hmm. things. Mental, you know, whether it's not just uh, mental impairness, but it could be just, you know, stresses of life, stresses of COVID, stresses of no job, There's all kinds of things are, are coming up that you're getting, you know, having to deal with as police officers going in and, you know, you, you tend to be the catch-all, a lot like the teachers are mm -hmm. for the children, mm -hmm. the catch-all of society's problems are like they show up at the, at the classroom and we've got to deal with the behavioral process, you know, the problems or whatever it might be, food insecurity, all of that stuff. And you see it just as well when you go to the kids' homes or the parents' homes or whatever you're dealing with. We'd love to have, um, you know, uh, a psychologist on board you you don't want to send that psychologist in right away because you don't know if that's a dangerous situation weapons involved whatever it might be but to have access to something like that and obviously our town can't afford to do that which mm -hmm. that's way outside of a, of a budget but um, I had thought you know for, for the county you know talking with FERCOG is there a way you know to pool resources or if, you know, whatever bills coming through the state if there's mm -hmm. grants that the that FERCOG could have access so that, you know, if you knew that, okay, we've been this place 15 times, we know what we're going to go and deal with there, is there a possibility we could take, you know, you could have somebody on call that was based at, say, in Greenfield that could address, you know, all the different communities. They, they would be stretched thin, right? You'd need, you'd need one in every community. We're not going to see that kind of resource from the state. Mm -hmm. I, I don't believe that just there isn't that kind of money. But no, even when they do right now, the problem that we run into is they don't feel safe. Well, so what happens too. is when, yeah. when DCF or social services or other agencies go to do a house visit, right. the first person they call is it's us you. to come with them. Yeah, I know. Because they don't even feel safe. Right. It's, it's very it, tricky. Yeah, it, it's because you don't know There's the not environment. Immediate you're right answer. If there was, police chiefs of the whole country would go. We're all about Sign it. Sign me up. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's I know. Not as easy. Said well, because you don't. You're not familiar with the place that you're going into. The person who may be hostile is com this their home. They're completely familiar with their surroundings. You get somebody in who's never never dealt with the people before. You may have actually had, you know, some interactions. So you kind of can judge the situation. But somebody who's never been there. Um, but, but it would be nice to have, if there are those opportunities for, um, for some um, interaction or some intervention with some mental health um, support or you know, all kinds of service support it would be great to, that, that it was more regionally shared so that yes, we wouldn't have it at every call. It wouldn't be nice to have that. But, if we could at least pull on that and say, look, this is a reoccurring issue. We've been here three times. We know that kids are dealing with this, that mom's dealing with that, you know, their dad's not in the picture or whatever it might be. Just is there any resource that you could pull with us and come with us on this call or, Absolutely you know, agree. or refer after? I'm sure you guys refer to, you know, yeah. to different agencies after that. But we got to find a way as a nation to not rely and dump all of society's problems on the police department because then they, they tend to get the brunt of inevitably something goes wrong because you're dealing with just the hardest problems of society mm -hmm. and you're the only one showing up so but on the other side there are police departments out there that we shake our heads at absolutely and i have to apologize to the residents because of it mm -hmm. when i picked up the newspaper tonight and an yeah. eight-year-old they attempt to put in handcuffs oh i know mm -hmm. 
because they I mean. punch yeah. a teacher? I, I mean, I what planet do you live on right. that you think it would be acceptable to take an eight-year-old out in a police cruiser or right. even try and put them in handcuffs? Right. I mean, that is a practice that would never transpire here. Right. right. And that's one thing I have to say I'm very proud about our department with is we're always on the forefront. We're always trying to think bigger than just Deerfield and yes, talk what we do. can do to help the community. Yep. For example, the chief... Um, and myself started the regional police training group. And this is something that we have started pre-COVID. Once a month, we'd have a training group with all of Franklin County and invite officers in to do oh, thank a, you. a bunch of different topics. But this would be a great opportunity to bring in mental health counselors. Yes. And to mm -hmm. just, once COVID's over, hopefully, and we can right. all sit in the room again together and to, to, ha to address these topics and how we can better serve communities with mental health, with ch yeah. children abuse, with addiction abuses, and just right. keep growing the conversation that way. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be really great. I know. And then, unfortunately, most residents don't have any idea what the police department does. Mm -hmm. They see that 1% out there, and that's what they base their opinion on. Now, I was a police, part-time police officer for 14 years in the town of Deerfield. I had over six fatalities of residents of Deerfield on my shifts. Mm -hmm. I've had weapons pulled on me four times. I only work part time in this quaint little town. It can be dangerous. There's a lot going on. And there's, you know, and thank God we have the training that we have with the police officers now. You know, quite frankly, when I got hired, we weren't much more than the Keystone Cops. Mm -hmm. That was a standard back then. It was a standard. Absolutely. Right. Um, and, you know, it's actually embarrassing if you go look at it until, you know, the state started mandating training. You know, the first training they had was brown book training. Mm -hmm. um, I went through it with a lot of the chiefs in, the, in Franklin County. And I was absolutely amazed how many cops we had in Franklin County that didn't have any idea what the law was. Mm -hmm. But Deerfield did. Mm -hmm. And it's only got better. Yeah. And it's, it's, yes, I've seen it grow. And I can't be prouder of the group of people that we have in place right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You know. I agree. Uh, our accountability and transparency is is top of the line. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I mean, that's maybe what we're we trying need to, to tell the story more. I, I mean, know. you guys yeah. tell me. I mean, Jen had a, a resistance subject this weekend that was swinging her around like a rag doll. Tried to trip mm -hmm. her multiple times, bringing her, uh, bringing him to the cruiser, and she didn't escalate it. Right. Mm -hmm. I know. Our other police officer was there. Neither one escalated it. They just kept their professionalism. Mm -hmm stuffed them in the back of the cruiser, called it a shift, and, you know, out of control and booking the whole time. It doesn't yeah. phase us. It's a standard day for us. Yeah. It's no big deal. We yeah. are an insular profession, though, and we need to do better about being not so insular and in, in more of what we do. Maybe we need to be more transparent in that respect of telling people what we do so they have an idea of what we actually are. I you know, know you sent me an article, and I haven't had a chance to read it yet, too, on the body cams because we're mm -hmm. you know that's a, another topic um it, it's it's very costly to do mm -hmm. um it does protect you it protects us mm -hmm. it protects the um the people i, I think about the, the massive amount of data that takes um mm -hmm. and the cost for that um and maybe there's grants for that i know that that's a, a subject that we wanted to talk about at some point mm -hmm. um you know down the road i don't i don't know what comes out of the bills and all that stuff i know you you've i've looked at that in the past and it's usually a budget issue well, because of it's, what's it's going a matter on of balance but. you know we want accountability we want transparency but actually in our case i feel like the body cams are really for our police officers to oh yeah you know to protect our police officers versus oh sure. really protecting the, the public so we really haven't done it um, because of the budget impact but and that's what we need to discuss yeah those are like, items yeah, that we'll you know, discuss yeah. still what, i'm still you know, researching i met with one vendor i want to get with two yes, I, more. I want to get you yeah that. and then we can have an educated yeah. conversation I would but like this that. is important to remember this is franklin county we're small i know if you have a heavy-handed police officer that's a problem it is going to be red flagged in the court so fast mm -hmm. yeah. it's unbelievable we know think about a clerk magistrate sitting through motor vehicle hearings and the same police officer's name keeps coming up and the same story from people that weren't even talking to each other. Now the same judge, Judge Masnick, is extremely intelligent. Mm -hmm. Is he? Oh, absolutely. Sharp as a tack. You sit in his courtroom, and he hears two or three people tell the same type of stories about you abusing your power. That police chief's going to remove you immediately. Yeah. You know, the large cities. Hi. The large cities. Hi, this is Judge Smith. 
Can I interrupt you for one second, John? Yes. We have a, um, a, a question on the chat. So it says, our police department is clearly excellent. However, we're in an era when we have to enact measures to help people of color in our community feel more safe with policing. Um, will there be time? And then they just want to know if they'll have a time to ask you a question, John. Well, not tonight. Is this, is this not tonight because we'll do a follow-up meeting yeah we're yeah, gonna absolutely. we're gonna this is only the start of i mean we're gonna have conversation ongoing conversation from now um through the budget season because what we need to do is work up what we're going to do as a result for the new bill mm -hmm. and also um we'll a public hearing on, you yeah, know yeah. what kind of transparency and accountability what can we do to improve what we already are doing um like i sure. said so this is this John came in on his vacation. We got Barb here waiting, and she's already worked Oops. all day. And we have a public hearing. So there's no questions tonight. Um, but we are, this is part of ongoing discussion. And I'm hoping that people will participate, and we can mm -hmm. answer questions. And people will feel very comfortable with what we do, because um, we've been trying. This is not a new thing for us. This is years and years of work um, in our department. and. Like I said, supporting our, our police force is, is really outstanding. And, but we do need to, I mean, there's always room for improvement, and mm -hmm. that's why we um, want to have this discussion. But please, Jen, also have them reach out to me. I'm more than happy to field questions right. anytime. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. And Jen is too. I mean, mm -hmm. Well, yeah. it's good to know what people's concerns are and, and what kind of questions people have, and that's why um, we're going to have ongoing discussions. Yep. But we okay. got to go. I think okay. we're 20 the, minutes over our time. The, yes. The last thing I'd like to say is a true reflection of a good department is when officers from the department are actively recruited by the Massachusetts State Police, ATF, Secret Service, FBI. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's Sorry, a reason that's me. happening mm -hmm. and why they're coming to this department. It's, but the it's downside. costing me money. <laughs> it, it's the downside for us, but it shows what our department is doing. It is. It is, yeah. No, other police departments love to steal our people, especially UMass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. But it also, means, it also means that we have a really <laughs> vital department. I, I feel that that's one of the things. There's really good energy. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds like but I guess, space, so but it's good. Public reach out to John. He's willing, and then I, we'll definitely have more meetings where we yeah, can absolutely. have. We're, John, we can have John and, and, and Jen or whoever yeah. will come back as soon as the governor's bill has um, been agreed on and signed. Mm -hmm. We'll start talking about impacts. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks so much. Thank you both. Thank Everybody you so much. Enjoy are. your vacation. Thank you again for coming in. That was very thoughtful. Did um, we can wait on the yeah um, the, it's the long hearing? Posted. Yeah. Okay. Good. Barbara, I'm so sorry to make you wait. Good you evening. Had a long night. I couldn't think of a better department to give my time to, so that was fine. Oh, that's fine. nice. Thank yeah. you. Well, thank you. Um, they deserve it. Um, how are you doing with all the stress of... Um... Yeah, I'll give you a couple of things that I need you to sign, and then I'll go back to my area. Okay. Okay. Um, and I, I don't know you'll hear me if yep. I no, leave go this ahead. on, You're so I will away. take that off. Yep. Um, so really, I want to talk to you just really briefly um, to update you on the upcoming election season. I'm Woo! calling it a season because it's like three or four months. I know yeah. it's hard work for you. I'm excited yeah. though. So um, the state uh, mailed out the cards to every registered voter, um, enabling them to request a uh, mail-in absentee ballot for both September and November if they'd like to. Um, so we have seen 1,200 of them. Wow. Come back into Barbara. <laughs> thank you, public. Come back thank to you. our office. So <laughs> it's um, a lot of work. There was, uh, you know, th all of this is happening, and then um, the state is, is trying to catch up with regulations to support what the ideas. So it has been a little bumpy. Uh, we waited for some time for envelopes. Um, but at this point, I can tell you that any application that came to our office is now out in the mail. So if you haven't gotten your um, uh, ballot in the mail yet, uh, I think 700 of them went out this week. So. <laughs> It's yep. coming. It's coming. It's did coming. You, did you do it by alphabetical order? Well, this is the thing. We have, I, I, don't, even, I don't even know what to do with my office. There's papers. We're <laughs> keeping track of who wants September, who wants November, who wants both, who did oh, it online, who did it in cards, who did it. 
Oh That's a my lot. God. So, um, so when the when the envelopes finally came, because they the state promised uh, postage paid return envelopes, so we couldn't send them till we had that. I right. mean, there was no substitute yeah, for that. So, stamps. so the box came, and we were like. Whew. We, you know, we got one person down here, one person up there, and we flew through them, and then we're like, where's another box? There was no other box. <laughs> so, yes, it was largely the beginning of the alphabet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, it is really what happened. So some people uh, might have different last names in their household. Someone got a ballot. Someone didn't. You yeah. know, I say, but you know, were up. they at the beginning of the alphabet? You're at the end. That's why. Yeah. So. <laughs> but it is coming. Yeah. Yes, all everything's out. in the mail at this point. And the post office has been great. I hand deliver them to the postmaster every day. Uh, these are ballots, you know, don't just toss Thank them. you, post Not office. Not that I'm insinuating they would yes. toss mail aside, <laughs> but I'm just saying, I draw their attention that they're ballots and they're waiting for them and people seem to be getting them quickly. Um, to that point, I just wanna say that um, it is postage paid, so you can drop them in the mail at no charge, but we do have the drop box. So, yeah. um, you know, if you're worried that time is getting close uh, and you wanna just drop off your ballot, you can put it in the drop box. That's something I gotta say, a lot of things that have always been no-nos are okay this year. So it's confusing. And now it's gonna be confusing when it goes back to a no-no, I'm sure. But anyway, right. you can put your ballots in the drop box. Yeah, no problem. Hopefully it's not a no-no, because this <laughs> seems to be good. Do okay, you, um, so can, we should just can say I ask one September quick question, 1st yes. is the primary. September 1st is the primary, yes. So if you have not mailed your ballot back by the end of August, or towards that end, last week, yeah. you better drop, put it in the drop box. Might want to come in and put it in the drop box. Do you want to hit on the, the questions that you've been getting? We talked mm -hmm. about today about. I do. Thank you. Yes. So um, on our website, on the very front page, the very first thing at the top is a link um, to answer most of the questions that we've been hearing. And that's so the town clerk's website. It's on, page. Uh, no, it's actually on the on main, the main page. page. Okay, uh, of the town of Deerfield. MA.us, the very main section. Yes, we do have stuff in our voting area. Yep. But um, so uh, I, I just kind of printed Great. what you see when you click on that thing. Yep. And this is what um, you can check to see if we did get your ballot application. Oh. So when the applications come, we have to enter them in the state computer and you can track it. So oh, you nice. can actually, there's a link on that page so you can click and see if I have mailed it or not, or if we got it or not, or, oh, that's or great. once we get it oh, back, fantastic. we then go back again. So we touch it several times, but you're going to see when we got your application, when we mailed your application, and when we got your ballot back. That's very oh, transparent. Fantastic. Isn't that's that cool? wonderful work. So you can track your ballot. Mm -hmm. um, other things you can do is look at every one of the um, ballots. Uh, some people are unenrolled and they don't know, you know who's on what ballot. You can see every ballot by clicking on that. You can um, uh, register to vote. You can click on here to get an application if you didn't get one in the mail for a, a mail-in ballot. So a lot of stuff, um, all the dates and times of voting. Um, and I'll segue into our next topic, which is in-person voting. Well, Kim, before you do that, though, mm -hmm. uh, when people request a ballot, mm -hmm. do you want to just hit on? Yep. Uh, so a lot of people don't understand really how to vote by mm -hmm. ballot and, yep. and and sometimes they just don't understand what they're asking for. They're right. asking for more than they should be have access to. <laughs> If yeah, you want sure. to do this, because it is a primary. It's different it a than primary, a regular yeah. general election. Right. So I, I just and, think and, it, it helps the public too, to know what um, you're doing. A large um, voting community out there are what, what they call unenrolled or people typically uh, refer to as independent. Yeah. So what that means is you're not um, affiliated to, with any one of the um, parties. Democrat, you're free. Republican, you're free to, Libertarian, uh, right, Green right. Party. So when a, a, when a primary comes and each party is putting forth their candidate, you need to say, I want to participate in this party or that party or that party. You don't stay that party, but you need to pick one ballot. You can only have one ballot. Yeah, so you can't vote for more than one. You can't so vote you're only in all getting of them, one ballot. No. <laughs> right. So uh, this primary, there are four ballots. There's the, uh, people who largely know the Democratic Republican. There's also Green Rainbow and Libertarian. Yep. Um, a couple of people have chosen some of the other parties and I just wanna say there, there might not be a nominee on, on the ballot right. at all. So someone will call and say, there's nobody written here. Well, there's yeah. no one running on the Libertarian state primary ballot. Right. So, um, so maybe before you make your choice, you wanna look at the ballots um, and the links are on our website. Thank you. Um, I do have to say that if you pick a ballot, 
that's it. You can't right. then change your mind and pick another ballot. Yeah. So, um, so I tell people, make sure you look it over. It's like you're voting. <laughs> your final choice. <laughs> right. right, right. And then uh, we're happy to send it to you. Do you think that answered? No, that helps asking? because I think people were yeah. misunderstood. Maybe they wanted all of them and then they would choose. But right, no, right. you have to choose who you're going to, yeah. what party and what candidate you want yes. to vote for. So that's right. why you want that ballot. What party you want to support. And when you get to a candidate? general election, you're only going to get one ballot. Right, there everybody's is only on one, one ballot. Right, once all the parties get their candidate to go forward, yep. uh, then there'll only be one um, that you did a great Super Bowl. job. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah, right. Thank you. <laughs> this is just that a playoff. <laughs> just a playoff. Yeah. Right. <laughs> We're missing our sports. I know. Aren't we? <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so, um, in addition to this huge mail in, um, you know, voting, they are going to hold in person early voting. And a lot of it. And a lot of it. Oh, my. Um, so, that starts on a Saturday. Yeah. Um, Saturday and Sundays included, um, mm -hmm. there'll be seven Open days Saturdays. of, of in-person early voting for the um, state primary. Um, I did a little calendar because some people are visual, so oh, I'll leave one with you. Thank you. Um, and I'll leave one with Casey in that office so they know, great. you know, what's going on down here. Yep. So based on the activity of the mail-in, I'm thinking that the in-person early voting, especially being a primary, is going to be, be minimal. And because our energies are going to have to be focused in our office, you know, taking care of all these return envelopes and, and um, ballots and, and sending out new ones. So I, I put my, my uh, voting booth up there. Perfect. And maybe if you want to look at it before when the meeting's done, when yep. you leave. But my, my thought is for early voting that week for the state primary at least, I don't know about November, but for the state primary at least, I'm thinking that I'm going to um, allow them to come in the – well, from this side, it'd be the right door, but from mm -hmm. the foyer, the left door, have the other side locked, um, roped off, and leading them to our window. Okay. And I'm going to just do one person at a time, unless it's a married couple. Yeah. Um, we're going to give them the ballot, let them vote right there, give it back to us. Yeah. Um, and then um, I, I wanted to send them back out there, but I think I'm going to have to send them just out have them that right, door. Right just have them right out the door, just in case there's more so, than... So what that enables is, is I'm going to rope off the whole rest of the building, you know, okay. especially uh, the bathrooms. Yes. Um, I'm going to put one of the tables there so they can't, you know, squeak down the, the, right. the building office corridor and that kind of thing. Um, and by having it right there, we can monitor it. We can run out and um, disinfect it before the next person. Great. Um, so anyway. If, yeah, we'll have, we have all those hand sanitizer stands and stuff we can have yeah, up for well, people when they come gonna, in. We're going to be wiping down. And, right. Um, I, I but if people, when that, they come in the door, they could. I know yeah. there's one out there now. They could, yeah. Uh, Barbara, how about on Saturday and Sunday mm -hmm. um, when there's no one here? Mm -hmm. um, are you going to have the constable and a couple other people here to help you? I, um, I, I don't think we should. You should be here by yourself. <laughs> it is only two hours. I, I do want to tell people it's oh. from two to four on two, Saturday two and Sunday. Um, and why? It, why date? two to four? I'll tell you why. What date does it start? Does it... it starts the twenty second of, of August. Of August. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so it's only that weekend. Yep. And that's then it. The, the following week till Friday. Okay. Um, so um, with the, with this whole thing too, they extended voter registration to only ten days before the election which lands it on a Saturday, okay. the 22nd. <laughs> yep. um, and we had to have voter registration hours from 2 to 4 and 7 to 8 p.m. Okay. I know. Just so um, I kind of picked that to coincide with the voter registration, which yep. is also going to be mirrored in October for the November election. And I, I called the local clerks to see what time they were having it, just so there's some continuity in the region. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, Lynn and Waitley's having the same hour. So, so, so that's where we landed on the two to four. Uh, we'll, you know, Sundays miss the, the maybe churchgoers and yep. be available from two to four. So yep. okay. that's how we pick the hours. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah. Um, and then know. what are the hours the following week? Like, so it's Saturday It's our Sunday. regular business hours. Regular, it has to be 9 to 4. 9 to 4. The place will be Monday open through Friday. for that business. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, so do you want someone here with you? I think we should um, figure well, out. Well, um, I do have access to A my poll workers. Worker. And, okay. and um, you know, I, I might even be pulling some of them in just to do processing. 
Right. Um, we're, oh, believe it or not, we're still waiting on some regulations on how, how to process the ballots before the election. So yeah. my uh, schedule is still a little up in the air as far as poll workers. But, right. um, okay. Well, I, yeah. I want you to know we want to support um, someone yeah. being here. So oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, I have that, that expense. Let, let us know. Yeah, so if I feel like sure um, I'm, yeah, covered. if I feel like I'm short, I will. And you have some poll workers, some new poll workers you've gotten? And uh, yeah. do yep. you need more or do you? Do you yeah, we have um, a handful of um, people who have, you know, heard the national announcement that we might be um, short of people and they've yeah. come forward. So that's great. Happy about that. Yeah, that's really nice. Thank so you. So do you everybody. want to make that motion? I'll make that motion. We, the select board of the town of Deerfield, by vo virtue of the authority vested in us by the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby appoint the following as poll worker for the term beginning August 12, 2020 and ending December 30, 31, 2020. Barbara Hunting, Christina Kopp, Kate Lawless, Andrea Liebenson, and um, Martha Miller. I'll second that motion. Is there any further discussion? No. Hmm. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. And I thank you all very much for stepping up to serve. And um, we'll make the motion on the ballot. Thank you. I did write down just some uh, notes. Oh, you know, great. As I did last time, um, it's really a draft. Okay. Um, and so basically, and this is the um, scheduling and kind of visual way. Uh, what I was thinking too, if it does get busy um, with this up here, um, then I might have to uh, bump the voting booth down here. If it gets real busy, I might have to put someone down here. So it's kind of just going to yeah, be see how it goes. See how it goes. Yeah. I think okay. most of our energy and attention is going to need to stay in the office in and processing um, all those ballots. Because as I said, we need to hit the state computer when we get the application. Right. Go back to it when we mail the ballot. Go back to it when we get the ballot. So right. It's there's a lot, a lot of, of, a lot of yeah. input. Okay. Yeah. Um, I make a motion um, that uh, we do. Do we read all the positions? I can't remember what. We're I'm sorry. To. For the this, election? For yeah. the election ballot? So. The state oh, permit. yeah. The warrant. Are you yeah. talking about the yeah. warrant? Yeah. 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 So we will be, um, the state sends out kind of a template and we, you know, put our congressional district numbers in there and everything. Yeah. Um, so we're going to post the warrant. Um, okay. I'll have someone come in maybe, you know, tomorrow and post the warrant. Okay. So. I make um, a motion to support the warrant for the senator in Congress, a representative in Congress, a counselor. A senator in the general court, a representative in the general court, and the register of probate. I'll second that motion. <laughs> Any further no discussion? discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara, thank you so very much. You're welcome. I just wanted to let you know what was going on. Yeah. yeah, no, that's wonderful. We'll post this. Thank you all for all your make, hard work. Um, you guys are working. I know you're doing a lot, and I really, really appreciate it. Um, we want to make sure that this, all this information gets up on our website so people yep. aren't confused. Is there anything else you wanted to hit on? Um, so, and that's, uh, you'll be doing no other business in the town hall at that time, but other than I, um, registering, what, I, I want I, to talk to you about that a little bit. You know, I said in my little draft thing there that, um, you know, I think, um, the other offices will be able to function. I mean, it's a whole week. You cannot yep. have not people. Right. And I think it's going to be kind of minimal traffic, really. And they'll be going down this um, corridor. So, you know, Karen and if, if Lisa's in or Sue's in, they do have doors that they can close. And if they, yeah. you know, and, and I'm leaving all of this, you know, untouched so they can right. use the kitchen. Or yep. if they come out, they'll just have to social distance and it'll and be a passing at best. So we'll have um, the doors open to the town hall specifically for voting. But close to the public. We're not doing like, yeah, right, all the right. other business of the town is normally done how we've been doing it. Right, right. And so, have you so seen the, any, um, has there been any, anything that we are not able to accomplish for our residents right now because we're closed? Has everybody been able to kind of do what they need to do? Yeah. I know they can't do it in person. Right. But there's no The only thing that we don't do that we used to do is we're not selling trash bags. So right. I know we've got that. I mean, but other than uh, like they can get them at the stores and they can get, they them, get at them at the dump the transfer and the stickers are the for sale at the yeah. dump. We have that mm -hmm. on the agenda yep. too. But I just wanted to just 
yeah. clarify that there's still people are able to run the business of the town perfectly fine. Yes. There's no, there's nothing yes. they're not able to have access to. I think, um, thankfully, over the years, people have gradually to the point where I would say at least 50% of people are comfortable doing things online. Yep. Many people pay their real estate bills online now, excise yep. bills, get their dog license. Um, right. can order all sorts of stuff. And now we put the, the uh, transfer station stickers online. So oh, you can okay, get a transfer great. station sticker online. And then you just mail them and out. And we'll mail it to you. Oh, that's so, nice. Okay. Um, so between people using the online payment and the Dropbox, yep. um, really happen. have been able to pretty much I, you know, that's great. Do, <laughs> do everything remotely. Well, um, people have mentioned, like, well, mm -hmm. why aren't you opening the business of the town? And right. I, I keep saying that we, we are... Right. Providing every bit of service. I, I don't, right. Is there anything that anybody doesn't have access to? I no, don't think I think there is actually, I think we're doing more than most cities or towns. And I have yep. to say, uh, for example, marriage. <laughs> marriage intentions, and which is becoming a real issue know. for us, is we have people pouring in from everywhere. I don't know how like they're finding Washington, us, but DC. <laughs> other city clerks or town clerks are apparently not doing marriage intentions. So we have people coming from Connecticut, Vermont, from Boston. We had a couple coming from Connecticut. They live some, it's got nothing to do with Deerfield. They don't live here. They're not getting married here. They're not, you know, so. You know, that's so weird because, you know, uh, that day that um, I had you notarize yeah. uh, the Mass yes. Association of Conservation Districts things, which was yeah. wonderful of you. Thank you. But um, that you were doing a marriage thing from someone from Natick. But yes. I thought that was so, so strange. So I, I did um, seek town council's opinion because I wanted to make it just Deerfield residents. I didn't want to, you have to do all or nothing. You have to yep. provide the service or, or don't not. provide the service. So and, I, and I wasn't able to say we'll only do Deerfield residents. Right. But I have to tell you, we had an instance too where we had an appointment with someone coming in at 1030 to do marriage intentions. And at 12 o'clock, she called and said she couldn't because her COVID test was positive. So she, she wasn't coming in. And she was from out of state. Right. So and I, I feel like we're drawing people bit. in when we very much want them to stay. And I'm hoping close now to home. with that travel, travel. band, that yeah. that'll be less and less, hopefully. But I, I don't know, I don't if, know. if we can, you know, say we need to see your COVID test if you're from, well, you know what, the New England states, it doesn't apply to, right? That's true. That's so true. It's only, the chances it's of, only you the know, someone coming from mm. Texas, I don't know. <laughs> no, uh, Rhode Island, if you come from Rhode Island now, you have to. Yeah, there's a travel yeah. band there. Now. I will have to say, uh, you know, I, I t we agreed in the office that we weren't going to make appointments, um, you know, starting next week in the week of w the with election. Your, yeah, just because, that makes sense. Yeah. You've got enough going on. Yeah, so. yeah. It's just, too, okay. it's just too much. That's, so. that's perfectly Great. okay, Barbara. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, just to reiterate, September 1st is the election. Yes. Please Tuesday. Vote. It's, a it's a Tuesday, Tuesday September primary. 1st. Yep. yep. State so primary. there'll be no voting Monday. There'll be no voting that Sunday and Saturday before the election. Yep. It will stop voting on the Friday before the election. So you can early yep. vote up until then. You can, you can early vote in person. Yep. In you can always drop anytime. off your ballot. Anytime yep. you can drop yep. that ballot in. That's right. Um, and then there'll be in-person voting that day for yep. anyone who hasn't already done their... That's right. Yep. Okay. Yep. I guess hours. I just want to reiterate again, one of the reasons we've been so um, locked down in the um, town hall yep. is because we felt that um, the business of the town has been so vital and that our employees mm -hmm. are so vital to our operation. Right. And they are working so hard. I mean, mm -hmm. the, you We've know, with this function. COVID stuff. Right is changing almost daily yes. and it is i mean everybody has been putting in very very long hours and i know we're going to be yeah. addressing that yeah. later on but yeah. it honestly is horrible yeah. and um it, it just we can't take the we just can't take the chance that we, um, anybody's going to be exposed exactly to and case. i think that's a, a very very important like the most important point right. is that you know in our office there are three of us we're there every day um, you know, we're not closer than six feet, but we spend a lot of time together and Brenda's, you know, in an off yep. office, but there's four of us together. So we have, you know, also kind of been pretty, you're, right. you're, even you're with our personal lives, own. we're all kind of like, Hey, you know, what do you think about this? This is, you know, we're, we're altered our whole lives, yeah. honestly, um, Absolutely. because I do feel like if, if, if one of us got it, it would probably Shut down be likely that one of, at least yes. somebody else in the office. And Well, I and appreciate you, doing, that would you be, know, 
thinking when you're outside of work, I appreciate everybody thinking about that, about their coworkers right. and about their livelihoods and right. thinking, okay, well, I'm right. not going to run off to North Carolina for a vacation because I can't really focus on, right, right, right. on just yeah. that one area. Yeah. So, okay. So, thank you. Thank Very you for nice. all you do. I know you've and, already. And your staff. So, <laughs> thank you. Have a meeting night. already. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Barbara. So, now we're going to get to our public hearing. Yes, I'm sorry. It's um, way late. Yeah, oh, these yes, all that should be signed. Yeah. Okay. Thank yep. you, Barbara. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Jen. Jen. Hey, Jen. Hi. Hi. Um, I just want to uh, say if anybody wants to make um, a public comment, like you can just tell me when you want them to do that, and then I can. We're, we're going we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, mm -hmm. to open the hearing, and then we'll ask. Um, just yeah, make we'll, a statement. We'll hear, we'll hear yeah. from the uh, applicant, yeah. and then we'll um, we'll open up for public comment is it, after that. Is the applicant on on the phone? Yep, I'm okay. I'm unmuting him now. I'm asking him. To okay. Talk to you. Okay, great. A notice of public hearing, and thank you. Um, I'm sorry that we took some extra time. I, in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 138, the Select Board, acting as a local licensing authority for the Town of Deerfield hereby provides notice that they will be ho hold a, town, a public hearing on Wednesday, August 12th, 2020 at 6.15 p.m. in the main meeting room at Deerfield Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass 01373. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adic adequate alternative means of public access where required public participation re provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 20, on the application of Powder Hollow Brewery, PHB, Yankee, LLC, Michael McManus, Manager, for a Section 12 all alcohol, on-premises liquor license, main room and two event rooms attached, two bathrooms, outdoor patio connected to the building. The total indoor area is 2,698 square feet. Um, the meeting ID is 911-604-1580. The dial-in number is 312-626. 6799 or 929-205-6099. Okay, the, um, I'd like to hear from the proponent. Michael, or is that you in the corner there? Yep, that's me in the black chair. Oh, okay. how are you? Welcome. I'm good, thanks for having me today. Sure. Okay. Tell us about your, your project. Yes, yeah, so uh, we're seeking approval to open a manufacturer brewery at the Yankee Candle location where the old Chandler's restaurant was located. So our business originated in Enfield in 2014. We've grown to about three or four other locations already, and we'd like to open up in South Deerfield. We think it's a perfect spot, and we got all of our federal and state licenses, and this is our final step. Wonderful. So. Um, can I ask a question? Oh, sure. No, okay, so I've looked over your application, and um, and uh, we have a. And I think I think in the in the application, I saw some emails going back and forth. We have concern about effluent into our sewer, um, and based yep. on brewing. But I, but I did notice that it's much. It's more of like a batch brewery. You're not. This is not a massive brewery um, producing you know, thousands and thousands of gallons of beer at a time. It's a much smaller batch. It looked like about 90 gallons and maybe, I don't know, 10, 10 gallons of waste or something like that. Um, so, so that's, that's correct. Is yeah. that correct? Okay, good. Because um, right now uh, um, we're redoing our sewer system and trying to get, get the heart and lungs um, brought up to up to speed and we're in the middle of changing our only clarifier we have right now we're on some temporary clarifiers right now so um, so anything you can do to lessen the amount of um, wastewater going out um, you know I, I, I did see that you'd be 
uh, you know, straining and batching and kind of sending off to local farms, you know, for feed or, or, or whatever. Um, the biggest problem we have is when, when a tank drops, and again, this is much smaller scale, so I don't think we're gonna notice anything, but just um, if you can take all care possible, if you do drain, if you could drain, you know, a little over a time, you know, something like that, or if it's, if it's just not th these big batches that come through, uh, wreak havoc on the bugs and the um, the you know the balance that we have going on in in the microbiology there. So um, again, I think this is really on such a small scale. We're really not going to see a problem with that. Um, but just anything you can do to pull out most of the BOD and that suspended solids would be great. Um, so that's just my my main concern. But we're excited to have you in town, and I think it'll be a great addition to Yankee Candle and and to Deerfield. Yeah, thank you. Um, if there's anything you guys wanted to come in and see it or whatever you wanted to schedule, yeah, uh, it is a 90-gallon system, so it's a very small setup. Yep. We have a production facility next to our original location in Connecticut. Okay. That's where we're going to be doing some of our large, large-scale production. Yep. So the sewer system up there is definitely not at risk. Perfect. If we brew a 90 to 100 gallon batch of beer, yeah. there's probably about 10 gallons of waste, and after filtration, it's probably less than five gallons that would ever go that's fine time. that that sounds great so i really appreciate that perfect yeah, everything sounds good there it's just you know we were concerned we weren't sure how much you were going to be brewing at the time uh when yep. we first heard about it and you know it's so um we don't want to especially right now overtax our system yeah because once you know, once we get it fixed the clarifiers up When's the timeline on that? Um, well, the, the clarifier isn't really the, it's the heart and lungs, so that's yeah. two years from now. Okay. But, um, but yeah, we should be good. If you're just in that small batch there, we'll be okay. So. Well, I, when we're going through the small clarifier, that's what it's. Exactly. You know. Yeah. All right. Um, the, the only thing I, uh, under the current orders, we just, um, you need to be serving food if you're going to be open to, for, um, so you can talk to our um, health agent on this? Yep. Okay. And that we can be, have that. Yeah, we'll then. be working with the health department to make sure everything's okay. We have a partner, and I just don't know, I don't want to speak on their behalf, but we'll have a full restaurant option for people. So okay. So when all you right. come in, you can get a full meal with your beer. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Yep. That's, that's all we're concerned about. Yep. Because um, uh, yep. the ABCC is, is doing inspections, so... Um, we're just making sure everyone is compliant. Um, and you've been in touch with Bob Walden, our yes. building inspector, and he's going to check everything out for you. Yep. So, um, is I'm there good. any public comment, yeah. Jen? Can you unmute anyone that might have a question? Nobody sent me a chat message requesting if you put star nine if you're a dial in my phone, that will alert me if you have any questions. Hi, this is Bill Swayze from Yankee Candle. Can you hear me? Hi, Bill. Hi, Bill. Yep. Uh, hello. So I'd like to speak on behalf of Yankee Candle. I mean, obviously, we're a very visible company who cares deeply about our image and our reputation, not only locally but on a national level. Yep. Uh, we don't take decisions lightly on who we partner with. Uh, we've done our due diligence and have found that Mike McManus to be a very ethical and trustworthy business partner. Uh, who we feel as though will be a great asset to our flagship store, but also an asset to the community. He's very thorough, detail-oriented. Uh, we feel as though with Powder Hauer Brewery and our relationship that we have with the food provider and them extending and enhancing their business at our flagship store, this partnership will enhance the offerings for Deerfield. So mm. we're very happy to have Michael on board. Thank you, Bill. Thank you very much, Bill. Yeah, it helps to have your have your advice on that so thank you thank you um we're going to close You're welcome. we'll close the hearing now make a motion to close the hearing i'll second that um all those in favor aye trevor mcdaniel aye dave wolfram aye carolyn ness okay the hearing's closed i'd make a motion to um to approve um the application, the application. and i think everything else is in order for it, sh um, it looks like it. Everything Powder House Brewery at Yankee Candle. And um, there we go. Okay. Um.
Any other questions or a second? I'll second that, Dave Wolfram. Okay. Any other questions? I just want to make sure that everyone is aware that this was a complete application. Yes. Um, I read through I, it all. I didn't have any more questions. So if no one has any questions. The, um, I just, oh. you know, obviously in Massachusetts, I think you're aware that the uh, surf safe and TIP certified mm -hmm. that has yeah. to be done. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Um, I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfram. I, Carolyn Ness. That was approved unanimously. Thank you for waiting. I'm sorry we got yeah. um, a little bit behind schedule. No worries. Thank you. I appreciate everything, and I look forward to having all you guys come in and check it all out when we're yeah. done. Yeah, wonderful. Welcome to Deerfield. Well, we're really welcome. excited to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next all right. Have a great night. You okay. too. Thank you. Next on the agenda is Carol um, Robolowski on Stillwater Road. Rogalski. Yeah. Oh, Rogalski. I'm sorry. I was trying to read it from here. All right, that's, okay. that's all right. Welcome. No worries. Um, yes. Um, first of all, I want to thank the uh, board members for uh, providing me with the opportunity, or myself and uh, a couple of my neighbors are on the call as well. Sure. Uh, to voice our concerns about the uh, disturbing trend uh, in our neighborhood, the Stillwater Road okay. near the uh, Stillwater Bridge. All right. Um, the area. I am going to speak about is located on Stillwater Road on the property underneath Route 91, both north and south bound lanes. Yep. This area, uh, along with the Stillwater Bridge, have become increasingly dangerous at an alarming rate over the past several years. The area under Route 91 has now become a parking lot for out-of-towners to access the Stillwater Bridge area for camping picnicking, swimming, and tubing. Uh, there are large groups of young people that are not wearing masks, not socially distancing, and also partying under 91. Uh, I see cars parked in the bushes late at night near the river under 91 almost every weekend and as well, uh, during the week as well. Uh, the, the trash that is left on a, sun, on a Monday morning is, is absolutely disgusting. Uh, I found uh, beer cans, beer bottles, diapers, deflated plastic floats, the boxes that they came in, and numerous other items that are carelessly left by people that don't really care about our town, much less being stewards of the river. Uh, there are numerous hazards and issues that need to be addressed. Uh, the length of road from 91, under 91, to the Stillwater Bridge has become a walking path for overflow of people wanting to get to the bridge. There are people in the road for, uh, constantly in the road for a majority of the day, uh, walking in the road with all sorts of paraphernalia, uh, meaning tubes, coolers, et cetera, uh, which create a road hazard for cars and farm, uh, tons of farm equipment that go back and forth on Stillwater Road. Uh, the road is not wide enough for two cars and people walking up there, let alone people walking up and down the road. Uh, there are families with small children that are flocking to the area, as well as carloads of young people. Um, I have witnessed and have photos of intoxicated young people urinating in front of my home, mm. uh, throwing deflated tubes in the woods in front of my home. I have to listen to all sorts of profanity and witness the profanity being spoken with small children present in these groups of people walking. Uh, I know I spoke with Casey um, regarding this, and I know she has toured the area with uh, Chief Pachorek and saw firsthand that uh, all the cars that were parked in these areas were not from the area. We were all um, out of town. Okay. Uh, I personally place a great deal of the blame on, Deer, on Deerfield Portage for luring people to this area. Uh, what? People pay $50 Deerfield to tube down the river once, That's and they the figure out that they comments. can do this themselves. That's the group from Conway, uh, or right? Just yeah. with uh, Deerfield Portage has outgrown their Hoosick Road location, and they now rent land up in Conway. Uh, across from the elementary school. Oh, I've seen that. I wondered what that was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it is. That's okay. that's Deerfield Portage. They've outgrown the parking lot. In, in the um, they, um, let's see, where am I? Yeah, there are hundreds of people that 
uh, who are brought to this area every week during the summer months. And it, it needs to stop. Uh, part, I don't understand uh, why we can't do something uh, with Deerfield Portage. Uh, I know they've skirted around the bylaws several times, but part of their business is in Deerfield, and they call themselves a taxi service, which they are not a taxi service. We can discuss with um, Conway, too. The, uh, this brings me to uh, another point about the environmental impact on the Deerfield River and its banks. Mm -hmm. There are hundreds of people that go in and out of that river every year, causing a recession of the banks along both areas. Stillwater Road is very close to the river along that strip mm -hmm. from the bridge down to Route 91. Yeah. And we do not need the river's banks being eaten away any more than they already are after Tropical Storm Irene came through here in 2011, which I will never forget. Right. Um, yeah. I have been experiencing significant anxiety uh, about this issue for years now, um, and it, it has, something has to be done. I feel as though I'm being forced from my home on the weekend when it should be my time to relax, but mm. I do everything else but relax. Right. You know, my neighbors and I should not have to deal with all this madness uh, almost every day um, on the weekends during the summer months. Uh, I, I have stepped outside of my home uh, when I witnessed these young people throwing tubes in the mm. woods right in front of my house. Um, and I asked them to go retrieve the items, which they said they couldn't find it. And then a couple days later, I had a rotting maggot-infested turkey carcass thrown on my lawn a mm. couple days after that incident. So I, I can't help but think that they're related. And, um, you know, so as a result of this, I don't feel safe in my home on the weekends any longer okay. for fear of retaliation. Um, you know, I see people when they walk by, they're staring at my home, they're staring in my garage. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole, it just gives me a bad feeling. Now, I have lived in my home for almost 23 years now, and for the first time, I don't feel safe. Have you and noticed? Have I don't you want to be home. Have you noticed yeah. a difference in the last year or two, or, or what do you think? Well, there was a time uh, several years ago, and I, I talked with Chief Pachorek about this, yeah. and that's when all the signage was put up, no parking signs. Right. And yes, it calmed and, down for a bit. You no, know, it did calm down for a bit, and now it's that, worse than it, I think it has been. Yeah. Um, people just continue to park wherever, um, you know, and I, and I, the parking fee from what I gather from the uh, officers on the police department, which are doing a great job, um, you know, ticketing, but um, I think the price of the ticket was $15, and uh, yeah. people just think of it as a parking fee. Right. It's just, you right. know, they can just park wherever they want and get a ticket, and that's fine. Yep. Um, you know, but... It, I don't, I have to place tires at the end of my driveway every weekend. Um, I've had to put all those big, large rocks lining the whole frontage of my property. Right. Uh, you know, people were turning around in my driveway and turning around on my lawn. Yeah. Um, I've had people do donuts on my lawn oh, years God. ago. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's painfully clear that something needs to be done and, and uh, I think barriers uh, need to be put up under that new parking lot under Route 91, no. um, north and south of Main. Well, you, this last few weekends, you could not fit one more car yeah. under that bridge. Well, uh, it's been know? like that. It's been like that all this summer because it's been so wicked hot. Thank you. I've I have it's observed. I, I have observed yeah, all the. I oh, I was just going to say I have observed all the conditions that you have mentioned. 100% um, every weekend That's and sometimes and it's sometimes even during the week now. Yeah. So I think it is the mm -hmm. in, it's it is Absolutely. much increased. Yeah, it's much increased from the last I would say the last year or two. So Carol, um yeah. I we have been working on this. Um, Casey actually um, has contacted Mass DOT about the property under the um, bridges to define what is the state responsibility and basically um, we have to uh, deal with their lawyers 
so they can give us a response. So it is being followed up on what uh, the responsibility is from the state on that. What we can do um, and what they can do. Mm -hmm. This has been ongoing. I've been working on this for uh, years. We've been looking at, I know Carolyn's been working for years to try and get river access because pe we want people to come to the area and use you know, the Deerfield River is just a wonderful place to be, but it needs to be orderly and not harassing the neighbors and strewing stuff. And like you said, urinating on the road yeah. and just that's a disgusting exactly. mess that has to stop. And so it's, I know it's, she's it been- something. I, I couldn't use my eyes. Yeah, she's you been know, working uh, on trying to get river access up up by, you know, still the cheap, cheap side bridge, you know, get the state because they own a big chunk of land there to try and work with, you know, DCR to put something in there so that people would have access. It would be orderly, controlled, gated, that kind of thing. But this, this we've been is documenting, We've been documenting and complaining for years, Carol. I wish there was um, a clean answer for you. Um, we, the police, obviously, we, ha we put on extra patrols um, on the weekend. And you know when the when the trash is really bad, um, our you know our highway guys end up picking it up. There's and be um, it, you know, so we as a town are already spending money. We're documenting this. Um, I'm complaining on county level as well as the state level. And um, we did get a few grants to study this. This latest one um, is the river access report that is going to be finished this summer. Um, and we've had multiple meetings of municipalities up and down the river because this is not unique to Deerfield. This is, you know, Charlemont, Shelburne, Conway are all having issues. Uh, Cole Rain, yeah. you know, I mean, this is, mm -hmm. this is countywide. So we've yeah. not been successful in getting um, any solution from the state. The state, you know, we've had site visits, you know, we've been there. Over the years, we've had mm -hmm. dragged the state um, in and had site visits. Um, we've done all kinds of stuff, and it just has not produced any solutions. So what we've done is pull the Franklin Conservation District, which I also chair. Um, we have pulled all the communities together. We've got a small grant. We're documenting what uh, the river access problems for all these small towns how it's costing us money, how it's disruptive and awful for our Dangerous. neighbors mm -hmm. um, that live there, yep. and how the n erosion is horrible because these natural river yep. banks were never met for the, the sheer volume of foot traffic yeah. up and down. We had a car or a truck flip over on its own. Yes, roof no. and that's river, where we right? put the gate there. Yeah. We put the gate there, and you know people had fits. Um, but that is uh, for, um, you know, the access of our first responders if somebody is drowning in the river. And we had, you know, people would park there and then they, you know, there was, the vehicles were getting in, into the um, river and stuff like that. So anyway, mm -hmm. the bottom line is we're finishing this report. Um, we're going to submit it to the state and, and we're documenting all this stuff. And we're going to um, ask for 10 or $15 million in the next bond bill, which is in 18 mm -hmm. months. And we're hoping that the state will develop down by Cheapside Bridge, which they own that property, and it would be a handicap accessible mm -hmm. area. And that they would come yeah. up with some solutions sure. for um, protecting the riverbanks and policing the access or limiting the access to um, some, you know, I don't know. We, we haven't really figured out a number, but so there's not yeah. overuse. I mean, there's still gonna be access, but it will not be overuse. So. so what, now this, uh, right. can, can, I mean, uh, we'll Can't continue, we'll continue yeah. this, one sec, we'll continue you this. Know, we need, we have a couple people that have some comments and then I have a comment as well, All Alan, right. so why don't we let, the person that contacted us through the chat speak first. Okay. Because okay. Get, I'll speak last then. So Go that, ahead. So that then we can get to a solution we might be able to get to. Okay. So just, just to mention your, your, say your, your name. name. Yeah. Um, I think you're talking about me. My name is yeah. Ashley Dodonna. Hi. Thanks for having us a part of the meeting tonight. Um, you're welcome. So we are the residents. My husband, Mike, and I are the residents most proximate to the Stillwater Bridge. Um, and Mike formerly owned the Deerfield Fly Shop um, up until recently, and so, you know, we're a real outdoors people. 
mm-hmm. um, couple. Um, and we have two small kids. And I, I just wanted to add in there since we are documenting and just, you know, we haven't really put it out there to the community and now we're alarmed and feeling like we need to ring the bell loudly. Um, that being so proximate, I've, I've, I've never seen anything like this year and it's very strange because it's COVID right. too. And so people are supposed to be social distancing. So I'm not sure if there's any way we can have any sort of authority as a town because of COVID, maybe that gets us a little bit more um, authority, I'm not sure. But um, we're no longer going down to the river. Um, The problem that we're having is that there's so many people now at the Stillwater Bridge now spilling over into 91. Um, We have people turning around all the way up into our driveway, Mm. um, our circular driveway. Um, we have a special needs little boy who mm-hmm. goes to the preschool, um, and our kids are active every day outside, um, and I'm having to install, install security systems because people are going all the way up the hill knowing that we have a circular driveway, uh, um, and we've had some issues, you know, with safety, and I've had to ask people um, to, they'll idle in our, um, in our driveway. Um, that's horrible ask them to move so we can get up into our driveway. Wow. Um, but the safety concern is um, really large for Mike and I right yeah. now. Um, and we have another young daughter. So I just wanted to put that out there. Um, we now have, in, so this is the other huge thing for us is that some of these strangers are now um, wandering onto the property and we chose this property because it's so expansive and the kids have the capacity to live a very active life outside and have it be private. Mm-hmm. And now we're having people come up onto the property, sometimes intoxicated. I, I, I'm assuming, you know, I can't make that call always, but um, right. it's really uncomfortable. It's starting to be, um, I mean, alarm is, is really what I can say. Let yeah. alone we don't use the space anymore. You know, we, we went yeah. down there pre-COVID to pick up trash as like a family activity in March. Yeah. We came back with three bags, including syringes and glass. Oh, and boy. the bank is eroding. And, you know, it, it, it's just, I'm, I'm an advanced practice nurse at Franklin. And what we're doing around COVID is so big and profound in the precautions. And I'm just wondering, can we translate that to this really heavily um, socializing spot and maybe yeah. that would at least give us temporary relief. But thank yep. you for having us. I appreciate thank you. you guys really looking at that. It means a lot to us. Well, thank you for the comment. We really definitely appreciate listening to it and um, finding a solution for you guys. That, that just sounds like a horrible existence right now. Hmm? You, yeah. you can't even imagine uh, living how it is to, to live here in the summertime. Um, you, unless you spend a full full weekend here, you you can't even imagine what yep. we go through yep. every okay. single weekend. I, okay, I just okay. want to tell you, I'm I'm, uh, you know, I drive by all the time because I live off of Upper Road, and um, I'm 100% sympathetic. Mm-hmm. I I really wish that I had an answer. We're trying so hard to come up with solutions, and you should never mm-hmm. ever feel. Don't not safe. safe. Property. That's yeah. why we have police. We put on extra patrols. So please do not hesitate to call our police, okay? Thank you. Okay, Casey's- if you have a comment, I have a comment. Yes. I talked to Carol about this, and we both had spoken to Tim Meyer down at District 2. Yeah. Yes. And after some conversation, he suggested to me, I contacted him via telephone and then I sent him an email with a basic synopsis yep. of the issues that Carol had explained to me and what he suggested was the select board put a request for information in writing to the district highway director yep. to receive an official response because of the intersect between the I-91 bridge underpass that area that Carol was talking about yep. and that Ashley talked about um, I think it would be worthwhile for the board to put together a letter. Yes. And I have the address. I can start the letter for you. But some of the comments that both Ashley and Carol and Carolyn brought up are things that we could use in that letter. Yes. However, the relief may not be exactly what what is. It may not be that 
BOT does that makes those changes. There may be an intersect between Stillwater Road as an access point, meaning that the town might have to might have to do more work. The town itself might have to do more work to mitigate those circumstances. Okay. Because the way DOT, it, it was explained to me, that Stillwater Road access point is a trigger for more usage of the area. It, it's kind of how I interpreted what he said. But I think it's worthwhile to send a letter. And that, that's what Carol and I had talked about before the meeting tonight. I'm, I'm not sure I quick, uh, fully understood what that meant. So they were saying the the Stillwater Road access point, which is, is that underneath the bridge? Is that what you're talking about? The I-91 yeah. bridge. Yeah. So that, yeah. that is, uh, is, is what? I mean, th they it, want that open? No, no, no. That's how people are getting to that right. area next to the river. And we want to be able to close that off. There are ways we could do that. It's just it's it's more complicated than than well, us. because I know it's not typically it's our much more town. Complicated yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's find a solution. So we're asking for DOT to recognize that there's a problem. Yeah. And it's not our land, so we have to ask them right. for assistance. Exactly. Okay. So but, let's do that. Um, okay. Carol. Yeah. Oh, what? Go ahead. Dave. Dave's yeah. This is Carol again. When I spoke with Tim. Um, he um, told me the same, pretty much the same thing what Casey just said, and uh, he also added in that uh, once they, um, you know, receive something uh, from us, the uh, he originally told me that the town was supposed to monitor the land underneath the bridges. Okay. And then. It's state yeah, property. And then, yeah, and so then I heard that. The DOT was supposed to manage the land underneath. So we need the lawyers the, to tell us. Yeah, the lawyers have to okay. get involved. But um, yeah. and Carol what, and Ashley. What he said was that he, the, the DOT would issue a permit for the town to put up some barriers. Yep. Okay. Carol and Ashley, I, I, um, just on the COVID thing, um, I was alarmed um, uh, months ago about you know when people after memorial day people started showing up and they were not wearing masks and of course as you said it's continued right along so i actually i co-chair the mohawk area public health coalition and we brought this up uh because it's it is it's up and down the river on all locations all over the county anyone on the river there no, no one is wearing masks and they're all congregating and it's a younger group um that mm -hmm. tend it tends to be a younger group i don't I mean, I'm not saying it yeah. is all younger, but it's mostly 20s and 30 year olds and younger. And right. so what we as boards of health all, all over the county had raised the question to Department of Public Health, who would come and um, enforce mask wearing when you had these congregation of way beyond the governor's allowance. And now again, um, you know, he's downgraded from the 100 to 50. We, uh, on the weekends mm -hmm. especially, you, there are more than 50 people there with not wearing masks. So um, I, we, they have not given us an answer, and I think they do not have an answer because, um, you know, especially in this day and age, no one, no one is in really wants to take this on, I think. So we'll keep pursuing mm -hmm. it from a public public health point of view and um i but i'm wondering if you would both of you would email casey just some of the um yes you, i mean it Any seemed like carol you had a, a huge list and ashley could you just e e email to casey or your what you why you're worried and what has happened in every incident so you can. that i can include it in our river access report because we're not going to get anywhere without money. The, we need DCR to assign an officer for, you know, to, for enforcement. There's a DCR person for all the parks and state property, because this is state property. So this is under yeah. DCR, yeah. Um, you know, authority. There's one ranger for all, you know, the on duty for the whole thing. 
So, you know, for the whole Western Mass. So there's nobody that can be here full time. Um, so what we need is more money for personnel and enforcement and also solutions. So um, it, it would be very helpful to um, put, you know, get the documentation and, you, and document your complaints, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. Yeah, I just have a quick question, uh, Carolyn. Um, is there, you know, I was a little, um, not a little, a lot upset to find out about this Deerfield Portage uh, mm. expanding and renting land up in Conway. Um, you know, their business, they've been, what, here for about eight years now, and every yeah. single year it gets worse and worse. Um, I know they've skirted around the law, uh, the bylaws, uh, several times, yeah. uh, most recently calling themselves a taxi service. Um, is there anything that we could do because they're they're a big uh, source of the problem. The uh, that brings people to the Dave Carol. Um, back years ago, when Deerfield Portage originally applied for a, a license in the town of Deerfield to do business, uh, the mm -hmm. board the board denied it. And the reason we yeah, denied I, I it, and the reason we denied it was not only because well, you know, we really didn't know anything about the business, but. Eversource in the state yeah. said they could not have access at that point. Mm -hmm. Right. So we've got to follow up with Eversource because they mm -hmm. have the rights to the river, and they said they didn't want people going in there. So. So we'll at that time. Interesting. We'll see what we can figure out here. We'll yeah. see what we, we can figure you. out. Yeah. We definitely it's, hear it's, you, and we want to find a way to help. I, you know, I'm go, I'll say till the day I die, they are the reason that there's so many people coming to this area. Um, you know, know, we all know the power of social media, mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah. and they are they are a big instigator, big instigator. We got to find a way so for it, for it to be safe. Uh, we have people that safe recreational access on the river, and it's just got to be respectful, safe, and regulated. I know, I know a lot of. I mean, when my kids were growing up, I didn't feel it was safe for my own kids, and and I um, I know that. Uh, a lot of local people, like yourselves, especially as neighbors, but I meant other local people are hesitant to let their kids go down there. So um, I, I won't be near there. I want to do virtual. Oh, they want or no, they want All right, whoever's to on, whoever's talking, can you please put your phone on, on mute? Thank you. Um, so thank you very much, Carol and Ashley and. Um, is there is there anyone else that wants to make a comment about this? Please, David. Who is who is that? I'm not sure who's on right now, but somebody I, needs to go. Does Gail's iPad will? Oh, does Gail's iPad want to say anything about this topic? That's all we can see. <laughs> I don't. You want to say something? No, nope, I got off. Oh, okay. I'm okay. going to mute you then. Okay. Um, any, okay, so thank you again for sharing your concerns and we'll, we'll see what we can do to help and um, we'll be in I, touch. We're very, yeah, we're very sorry. If there's, anything, if there's anything else that I can do, yep. uh, please let me know. Absolutely. And I will be more than happy to do it. Okay, thank well, you. I, like I said, if we can get some more additional documentation, that would be wonderful. Having for your first-hand yep. stories is wonderful. And... Um, I am truly sorry. I seriously have been putting energy into this. I, you know, back since when Dave was on the board originally, um, and we we haven't given up. It's just that there isn't an easy solution. So thank you very much, and I really am sorry. Welcome. Thank you so much. I appreciate you yep. hearing what we have to say. Sure. Thank you. We'll be we'll be in touch for sure. Um, okay. Next. Thank you so much. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is um, reopening. Uh, I think before we get into that, I just want to take a minute to talk about employee wellness considerations. Mm -hmm. um, Casey, would you, everybody has been working so hard. I mean, honestly, um, I'm, I'm early in the morning till the end of the day, night into the night. I'm trying to answer emails and try to keep on top of stuff and tend, we have Zoom meetings and 
conference calls two or three, four, sometimes a day or more. Um, the information comes in and it changes from day to day. And Casey and Jen have been working, um, you know, 50, 60 hour weeks. Barbara, you know, trying to stay on top of things. Dick, Dick is working, you know, many, many hours. Um, we're really trying to cope with the whole COVID thing. It's been really stressful for all of us. And um, I think we need to um, have a, a, a way that we can work with our employees to be a little bit more healthful. So Casey, can I just turn this over to you to talk about um, what we had sure. proposed? Sure. Well, I had sent a request to the select board because, you know, as Carol, as Carolyn mentioned, we've been working really hard. Everybody has. And we're trying to continue to provide services. Barbara mentioned it. The chief mentioned it. Um, it. It comes up across the board, trying to provide services, trying to provide access, whole hearings, do the business of the town. And one of the things that as COVID continues and limitations stay pretty tight, which is what we've experienced in the past week. You know, the governor sort of tightened things back down. Um, over the course of the last month and a half or so, people have continued to be upset about this. They don't like the limitations. COVID is scary. Nobody wants to put themselves, their children, or the rest of their families in jeopardy. But the reality of it is we're living in a pandemic. And so I noticed it in myself and in the people I'm working with, we need a break. We need five, ten minutes to take a break. You see a lot of commercials about um, apps you can use on your phone like Calm mm -hmm. or, you know, there's other, I think there's one that actually is break, but I use Calm. Um, the point of me saying to people we need to recognize this in the employees and ask the board to endorse the ability for us to take that five minutes because it's important for us to be able to provide services. We have to have emotionally be level and able to cope. And so when people are coming at us with, with upset and anger, and it's happening everywhere, the reason you have transfer station stickers on your agenda is because of this. <laughs> we need to give ourselves a little bit of latitude to take five minutes and just, just take a break from that stress. And I am the first person to tell you I'm bad at this. <laughs> Ask any of my employees. I agree with <laughs> on this. On the other hand. <laughs> Not that you're bad at it. I just agree um, that we all work really hard. And I think I, I completely endorse this. I think um, we all are we all are really stressed right now. It's not just our our home life, but certainly those in public service or every day doing your job. Um, it's stressful times. You're making difficult decisions that affect people's lives. And, um, and, and we're all, you know, kind of on that mouse wheel chasing the cheese. We're all working, 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 working really hard. There's a lot happening. Um, and, and these are, these are really serious topics. And, and we can get short tempered every, every once in a while and like bark out at somebody or like not really hear what they're saying uh, because we're, we're moving around really fast and we don't take the time to actually sit and listen uh, to what people are saying. And then, you know, we, we jump to a conclusion or we, we just uh, hustle off on an answer and it, and it becomes short or somebody's so stressed that they don't really hear what we're saying and, and our intentions aren't coming along. So I do think it's always important to take five, 10 minutes and just, um, you know, go outside and sit. Um, take, in, take in a nice, you know, five minutes of, you know, breathing, um, uh, whatever it might be. A little yoga, real quick yoga, a little, little breathing exercise, a little five, you know, five, ten minute, just decompress and, and you will come back a lot, a lot healthier and your mind will be clearer and you will be kinder to people. Um, it's important to, to uh, cons it's important to protect your own health so that you can portray that onto other people and not stress other people out. So I endorse and this. So that's exactly what I'm asking for. Um, our, our wellness group, because we've, we've had sort of the opportunity through our wellness group and the insurance trust that provides the insurance for town employees have. Um, they've provided programs and there's other programs, like I said, that are private that you can get apps and some of them are free, some of them are not. 
But the point is, is if the board endorses me sending, saying to people, look, you need five minutes once or twice a week, take the five minutes because you will come back a better employee and able to interact with the public and with your coworkers much more effectively. I agree. It's, you know, it's especially now, people need that time to diffuse themselves. Mm -hmm. Because if they don't take that time, it just causes a lot of problems. Um, there's so much stress. What the audience doesn't know is what, what I do, David, and you see it every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, I'm, I'm the worst offender. Yeah, I know you are. I look at when your car is parked here and it shouldn't be, or when you're sending out an email and you shouldn't be. Um, it's all day Saturday. Or, and, yeah. And at 11 o'clock at night. We're emailing back and forth. I mean, that's not, it's not good for all of us. Um, I know I'm sitting doing email six or seven hours a day and I, and, or have the phone out of my ear. I mean, I, you just, we don't even, it's just very difficult. So what would you like us to do, um, Casey, um, to support this? I think I would just like the board to make that statement that they support implementing wellness, short-term wellness program um, offerings by the HR staff, either myself, Barbara gets information, that we can push out to the employees and say, look, if you need a few minutes, you can take a few minutes. This shouldn't impede your performance. It should be a way to help you disconnect from the stress that might be standing right in front of you for a couple of minutes, just so you can come back more refreshed. Yep. Um, I agree. Yep, I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second it. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. So and, please utilize it. Right, <laughs> and, and Casey, would you just send out a memo that no. we, we Hot. would... We would kettle black, I know. <laughs> no, no, but no, 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 no. Sorry. We're not calling any kettles here. <laughs> no, um, but just send out a memo that we are very appreciative of everybody doing every uh, all that they're doing. I just want to make sure the employees have the resources they need so yep. that they can be refreshed because I know how stressful it is for them because we're all upset and scared. I know. But I want to I can't her. control the public, but I can I can help the employees have the resources. This is Jen. I just want to say something. I think that we put in all these extra hours and everything because we care so much about the community and keeping um, the town moving forward. And yeah, and that's why we do it. It is stressful, but, and thank you, Casey, for asking the select board to um, do this for us. Appreciate it. Yeah, all of us care. Okay. Absolutely. We know. Too bad we're losing the way COVID has upset all, all of our <laughs> apple carts of process I know. for it's, everyone. It's awful. It'd be nice if we could uh, program the system to shut down for 10 minutes I know. every now and then so oh. you can't do anything. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we were having power out outages. <laughs> office yoga. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I can make you do office yoga, Jennifer. <laughs> um, I, I did. You can try, try to do that. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, I did receive an email today from um, Greg and uh, about school reopening um, a petition. I, I, it's not in our packet, though, is it? Um, I don't think no, so. I didn't receive one. Okay, I, I received it in the email. I'm sorry, I did not print it out. Um, I'm sure there's people that have comments on that. So. Um, uh, what I'm going to do is I will forward it to Casey because I didn't realize that it wasn't forwarded um, already. Um, we'll forward it to Casey. I want to say that we'll, we will take it under advisement. Um, our authority as Board of Health is public safety and public health, and um, which is public safety. And, um, you know, so we can't we're so far away everything is so fluid that we as board of health are not going to overrule the school committee at this point because it's so far away from you know the start date if if we have a health concern or uh with spread in the community we've worked really really hard um 
Meg Birch and um, Darius and his administrative staff. And I mean, we had hours uh, late at night going over how do we make opening, reopening and closure um, criteria is meaningful. Um, I was really concerned 10 days ago when we were, um, you know, two weeks ago when we were experiencing uh, community spread and a spike. Uh, we thought it was 4th of July vacationing, which people went on and then didn't pay attention and came back. And it looks like it. We haven't had any additional cases since. Um, we are promoting um, mask wearing, social distancing, and washing and wiping down, washing your hands and wiping down surfaces as a multi layered protection that needs to be worked together. And we're asking everyone in the community, we are in this together, to be mindful between now and when school opens so we can open school. Um, we can be safe. Um, we have a countywide meeting tomorrow that we are going to nail down what testing is available. It's, it's, it's critical that we have testing available. Uh, testing, tracing, and isolating is the only way we're going to be safe. So we're going to nail down what is available in the county. If it's not adequate um, capacity, we are going to start beating the drums. Um, but at, at this point, I want to be honest, we don't have the conditions that would warrant us doing anything different than what the school is suggesting at this point. But I know a lot of people would like to t um, have public comment on this, so um, we'll, we're open to listening. So please um, let Casey and Jen allow everyone to speak. Um, I'm more than willing to hear what people have to say. I, I, All right, we have somebody, let's see, at least uh, Greg. Do you want to say something, Greg? I do. Um, I appreciate what all of you must be going through, and I appreciate um, the many, many um, hours of extra time everyone is putting into trying to get everything to happen. My concern is that the reference um, point that seems to be getting used is repeatedly that our numbers are good. and. I think that the reason our numbers are good is because everyone has been trying as best they can to they do everything that they can to keep things safe. And part of that was taking the kids out of the school. And I feel that in light of what's happened in the past week with universities all over the country and people in the towns and cities all over our state, public health officials and epidemiologists saying that they feel that it's too early to be returning to school. Obviously, everyone wants the kids to be in school. I don't want my kids to be in school. He misses his friends. He misses his teachers. He loves all of them and wants, you know, more than anything to go back. And I want him to be able to go back. But I don't want anyone to be able, because of our haste in rushing this, to suffer the consequences. And the consequences are not numbers. The consequences, as one of the parents, or I, don't, I, I guess she, I think she's also a teacher, but one of, one of the parents that spoke at the last school committee meeting said when she was talking about her son, who's a, a pitcher on the baseball team and a very you know healthy, athletic kid, he's crippled. He's, he can't walk. He can't get to the refrigerator to get a glass of milk without taking a chair with him. And because he's afraid he's gonna fall. And he, 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 it's, she doesn't know as a parent whether he's ever gonna recover. And I don't wanna see that happen to anyone else. And I feel like the choices that we have are obvious about completely, which nobody is ready to do, which I'm grateful for, to go to the hybrid model, which feels safer but the safest option is obviously to not go back yet. 
no one wants to do this remote learning, but if we don't put, give the teachers the opportunity to learn how to do it by, by letting them have the time that it will take them to be able to learn how to make that switch. They, I mean, the, the spring, everyone was disappointed, but the, how could they not have been disappointed? No one knows how to, no one, no teacher is, unless their, their specialty happens to be remote learning, knows how to translate everything they've ever done into using a computer to do it overnight. And it's never going to be done as well, probably, but it can certainly be done. There are many people who are already doing it, and successfully. I just feel like we're, we're doing this too soon, and I'm asking you guys as the, before the train leaves the station or comes into the station, when anyone else is hurt from the consequences of that, to reconsider and, and to use your authority to intervene and, and slow everything down for a few more months. That's basically all I have to say. I want you to, to vote as a Board of Health and Select Board to stop this. Thanks, Greg. Thank you, Greg. Um, we are listening. Um, yes. Is there anyone else would like to make a comment? Okay. Um, we, we will be working as much as we can on this, Greg. Okay? I just, I just want to reassure people that um, safety of our children is the number one priority. But it's almost, we have almost 30 days or 28 days before school starts. It's, we can't make a public health decision at this point. So um, thank you. Okay. Uh, we have a consent agenda. Um, Casey, would you like to talk about the transfer station stickers? Sure. So I received a report from Superintendent Scarborough of several instances while stickers in the past couple of weeks, I think they were on Saturday as well, stickers were being sold of not, not very nice behavior toward the employees selling the stickers. Instances of yelling, swearing. About um, what? I don't understand. This About is the same what? prices. We have not changed prices. Anything we and everything from the, the cost of the stickers to um, the rules changing. And, you know, what to rule? the point where, and this is why I bring up all this, to the point where the department head himself, having experienced this, sees his employees experiencing this, and is very cognizant that it, it can be construed as abusive behavior and does Absolutely. not want the employees it's objected to that. So well, we I... talked about it. Mm -hmm. um, he, he is going to utilize a part-time person to sell stickers up at the transfer station to continue that because we do believe providing that service to people is important. On the other hand, I would just like to take this moment to remind everyone that the people up there selling transfer station stickers and any of the employees that we see out doing work are doing their job. They exactly. aren't necessarily the people making the policy decisions in town. We are trying to do our jobs as we're told to do our jobs and how our job descriptions read. So when when we're and, and I I say this as a person who loses her temper sometimes, it's up to us to try to be cognizant of the folks around us. So, it, but if this <clears throat> behavior continues where, the, where employees are complaining about how they're being treated when they're simply trying to provide a service. Nobody should um, be treating our employees. Come back to you and ask Casey, you if we can eliminate that. Casey, can I interrupt a second? Nobody and should be treating Casey, by mail. can I interrupt a second? Kate, uh, nobody, <laughs> nobody should be treating our employees with any disrespect. Period. I mean, I'm sh I know. that's shameful. It's awful. It's shameful. A man is selling a dump sticker. You do not swear at, the, at an employee. You don't treat them with disrespect. If you have a legitimate uh, complaint about a price, um, a process, whatever it may be, you can address me as a select board member, send me an email. Everyone has my cell phone number. I'm happy to discuss pricing, policy, any of that stuff. But for any resident to treat our employees with any disrespect is completely unacceptable. 
Uh, just that fury. I me. understand. Uh, they should I not have to. Saying, and mm. the employees do try to do what they're what they're advised to do by their department heads whenever this happens. It doesn't matter anywhere. Is to be if respectful back. Contact my supervisor. Right. And so you know if if. The supervisor isn't available. They're welcome to call the town hall and talk to me. I am fine with that. Right. I will investigate the things that come through, the complaints that come through the office. Yes. But you're right. Um, yeah. And so this is the reason that I just bring this whole point up of remembering that we're all in this together. We are all stressed. We are all angry. We are all upset and fearful. The, and it's I'll, up to us to be kind. And I'll address pricing. So... W you know, we are losing money now because of, because no fault of our own or our employees selling the sticker is that, you know, China is no longer taking recyclables. Many, many places around India no longer taking recyclables. We used to get paid a certain amount of money for our trash. We now have to pay $28,000 more than we did last year. So that, you know, and yet we have not raised our prices yet. So, um, I'm not sure where the anger is coming from, but we're trying to make it break even. It shouldn't be the cost of all taxpayers to pay for the people who use that system. So you can pay to have your trash picked up at your curbside, or you can buy a sticker and buy bags and use, use the, the trash system. But, but it shouldn't be on the responsibility of taxpayers to compensate for your trash. So we have to find a break even point where whatever we charge for bags and whatever we charge for the price to enter um, and to throw away bulky items, we have to make sure that it that is, an, that is an equal playing field. Whatever it costs to run that system, we have to charge. And we try to make it balance out. And it's just gotten, because of the world conditions, a whole lot more expensive to do. Um, and yet we still haven't changed the rate. So I'm not sure why people would be angry at all to begin with. Um, yes, it's expensive. I don't know that they take the time to read it, Trevor. They may because not, right. but again, changed in over three years. please direct the anger to me. I'm happy to have a discussion with you about it, but please do not take it out on our employees. Well. They do yeah. not deserve that. They're working on a Saturday. You know, it's just not, it's just not appropriate behavior, so. Yeah, in the way I look yeah, at well, it. The thing is, is we'll continue to do it. He wants the, the superintendent wants to continue to have transfer station, station sticker sales. I'll put the transfer station for now. We also they're available online, mm -hmm. or you can send in your payment, and a we'll transfer station sticker will be mailed to you. Yep. So we've done our best to push it out so that people have remote access to that service. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And if they want to be abusive, we'll just cut out selling them at the transfer station, and they can do it the other two ways. I yeah. hope not. I, no. I think. I hope we'll not either. But you know, it, you hate to stop it for a few. But you know, the unfortunate part, anger sometimes gets a little carried away, and we don't want that to happen. No. <laughs> and it's just, you know, we have to look out for the what's best for our employees too. Mm -hmm. um, and you're already demonstrating you're looking out for what's best for the town as well by being mindful that yes, the cost has gone up, but yeah. our relief out there for recycled materials just isn't available. Nope. No. That could change. Yeah. But yeah. that's actually been in place for over two years. It's been difficult mm -hmm. to recycle. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, Casey, the only appointment that I could find in my packet was for the Franklin Regional Planning Board. Is that the one you were talking about? I think it was. It was. I think Kip was, was on the board. I don't know if he was still serving. Yeah, I, I had reached out. The <laughs> person that had filled this position before was Kip Kamosa, and I reached out to him via email. And he's got a lot of other things going on right now, so he's not interested. Okay. The... The select board can make an appointment or they could choose not to make an appointment. What I would suggest is we let everyone know that there is an appointment for the Franklin Regional Council of Government Planning Board if anyone's interested in serving. So we could have, I know there's a couple new members on the planning board. We, I know, and the planning board does appoint one person to sit there and the select board then well, appoints a second, which we could appoint another planning board member if they were interested. So, um... So we could appoint anybody or we can go, one of us can go ourselves to sit in. Uh -huh. um, 
it would, you know, we might want to just mention it to the planning board or or another board in town, uh, conservation or zoning, if anybody's interested in, you know, getting more education and being working more regionally, it would be a great opportunity to serve the town and, and to gain it, education from other, other people. Casey, would you um, send an email to Kip and ask him if he would um, continue to attend? He, she did. Oh, no, and, to and attend. And he's not interested. No, I, I know did. he's not and interested. He oh, he, he, he wouldn't go for another month or two until we could find a replacement? Uh, I, I can ask. Okay. Just just ask him if you wouldn't mind going to the August meeting so we could um, have someone for September. It's usually at the end of the month. Um, I was, uh, I attended these for years. So if, if he could just cover the August one so that we could advertise and try to get someone to come for September. Okay. I appreciate that. I will try. And then, and then we'll send in, if you wanted to send an email to those three boards and see yeah, if anybody see there if, wanted to serve. Yeah, see if we could get somebody from one of our current boards. And if not, uh, maybe one of us can go. I mean, the, the issues are important. So mm -hmm. it would be nice to have someone there. Um, uh, contracts is the uh, next amp. Do you want to just No, talk? the next day contract, we're still waiting for information from them. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that. I'm leaving it on there because the minute we get it, I want you guys to be able to sign it. It's taken a long time to negotiate this contract. Okay. Um, so the next item on the agenda is our policies, uh, media policies. Do you want to go over it, Casey, for us? Sure. Are these just so a review two tonight? policies that I brought up. Are these just a review tonight? It's up to you. The issue, one of the reasons that I brought up social media and IT is as things are changing with COVID, mm -hmm. um, we're being asked more and more often by state and local officials to push information out yep. via social media under the assumption that we have social media policies in place. A lot of towns don't use social media very much, whereas other towns use it a lot. So I'm concerned about not having a social media policy in place as we're being asked to utilize it more and more and more. Right. So you're, no, I sent smart. it out a couple, I sent it out a few days ago. I cleaned it up in the packet so it looks, you know, a little more uniform to what we normally send out. I Certainly take some time to review it, but at some point we do need to pull the trigger on that and on the IT policy. I've got a cu couple of fixes, just mainly typos, but I, I think it's good. I read through all of it and, um, and I, I, yeah. I did some research with um, John, actually. Oh, good. Chief of Turek, because... Well, they do a great the, job with that. In my, They do, and one of the reasons they do such a great job is huh? because they have to have very refined policies for very specific things. Yep. No, so just, it was something that when I talked about it with council, right. I, we, we identified the fact that for purposes of what other town departments are doing, it may not need to be quite as refined, mm -hmm. but the basic structure of his, of his social media policies is something that we utilize as, as the backbone yeah. of what we, what we came up with. It's very so, fact-based. Yeah, take a look at it, but I would prefer if we could maybe get it done by the next time. Okay. Because the more we intersect with social media without rules, the more liability and, and stress we put on our own employees. Casey, um, is this like um, um, the Board of Health stuff that once you've taken it under advisement, it is the policy until you change it or vote it not to? Or I don't vote think it? so. Okay. I wouldn't treat it like this. Well, like I, that. I I would say. We could figure it like for next meeting. I guess we could wait another two weeks, I guess. I think so. All right. Let's, just let's put it on the agenda stuff, for two but... weeks from now. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much okay because... You know, I don't use social media, so. <laughs> but it's any it's, computers. It's, like, it's okay. not even social. There's social, know, and then there's I IT know, stuff, I know, too. I know, So, um, we'll I mean, it there. looked okay to me, <laughs> so. Um, but Dave would like to read it a little bit more. Yeah. And so did, did Lisa review it? Casey? Or Kate? Uh, um, actually, Council reviewed it. It wasn't Lisa. It was Alex um, okay. Castro that reviewed it with me. Okay, so, and they felt it was okay? Yeah, that's, we finished developing it with Alex and Kate. Okay, all right. I mean, I think it's fine, but okay. Um, next item on the agenda is sewer abatements. We had 
We have no, some we don't. Sewer? I okay. think that's just a placeholder. We don't have one. Yep. Okay. It's, it's a placeholder because you don't have a limit on those. So. Yep. Okay. I'm just waiting. <laughs> um, uh, tomorrow is um, the ZBA Lascotti hearing, um, South Deerfield Series LLC. Um, I I thought we had submitted um, comments. Um, you know, back when this started, did you find the, our comments, Casey? I didn't. I reached out to Sue Brulat down in the land use office, and, and that was last night after you and I talked, Carolyn, and she can't find one. I could go look And I don't know, it might have gotten lost in the shuffle of when it was, it was received right before Christmas. The hearing was in the beginning of, or middle of January, so it might have gotten lost in the holiday struggle that we all go through. Oh, well. Um, I, I there guess there are a couple. Of, you realize the hearing is tomorrow, so yeah. Yeah, I just I feel yeah. like though we should submit as select board some comments. My my concern has been stormwater um, and additional water into Bloody Brook. I'm I'm always concerned about flooding with Bloody Brook. I mean, for years we've had several intense rainstorms that either flooded or nearly flooded that whole North Main Street. So additional water is an issue and uh, you know I drive down through that intersection to come to town hall and you know I a traffic study in August isn't the same as a traffic study in September and October when we have school in session and you know leaf peepers and tourists and everything else so you know I, I think we should you know traffic is a concern and so I think a, a more realistic traffic study so I mean those are just my two comments do you, have any do you want to comment Trevor or you want to go? Uh, nope I don't right now just... okay um, well I realize this is quite the quagmire um, yeah. yep. and it's hard to go um, you know it's unfortunately the from everything I can see and understand right now, we're kind of in a bind because the town didn't really handle it well. Right. And we've already been to Superior Court once when we were thrown out. Uh, you know, I know the argument about square footage is, you know, we've also given variances for square footage for Cumberland Farms and for the self-storage. Uh, you know, I don't want General Dollar General in town, you know. But I also have to look at it on the legal side of it and making sure that we're protecting the town legally and what we're doing. You know, yes, I do like the concept drawings of the building because it looks like a miniature Yankee candle. But, you know, there's a lot of other things that go with it. You know, I understand Carolyn's point with the floodwaters and stuff. Uh, you know, any pavement to be put in there should be permeable pavement, pavement. Um, um, wetlands is, you know, uh, it's not actually a wetlands area, but that's beside the point. Um, it's just, you know, the ZBA has got a lot of conditions that they want to put in. Um, I think that's going to address those tomorrow evening and before any variance is given. But, you know, we have to go forward with this hearing and try to get everything done as, as the best we can and move forward. You know, every one of us wants to get this thing off the table because it's just consuming much, so much time in everybody's, you know, between uh, the town administrator's office, uh, our emails constantly coming through and stuff. And, uh, it's just, you know. I do want to say thank you to Casey and um, um, our administrative staff in our office and also um, in the building department. Um, they put a lot of work in this and um, I especially feel bad. Um, they were going to hold this outside uh, in the back um, baseball lot and um, the governor they had it all organized and uh, having it on, um, you know, four o'clock so the mosquitoes get it in before it got dark and before we had mosquitoes coming out. Um, and then the governor came out Friday and changed the 
um, outdoor gathering. So I just want to say our office did put a lot, a lot of work into this. And so thank you. Sucked up the whole room. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So Casey, can you just write up um, water, she just some water to fill issue? It out. Yeah. Well, oh, you want to fill it out? All right. That's fine. So um, are you all agreeing that um, stormwater, additional stormwater to um, should be bloody brook is an yeah. issue of course the conservation commission is going to be meeting yep. next yeah week, next I, I, mean, week I, feel, it, so. I feel like a, for weeks. me i just want the boards to do their job and you know be careful yes yeah. and make yeah. sure when the boards are acting they're looking at it not just because it's something they don't like or do like or do like it's something that just falls the within the parameters or not within the parameters of what our bylaws are uh, every time we deviate from those for any reason at all, we get ourselves in trouble. Yep. Um, okay. You know, the aesthetics and are... And we will get that to them tomorrow so yep. that we can get okay. it scanned in with the rest of the comments. Thank okay, you. Okay, very good. Thank you, I know Casey. there has been a lot of... Con I've been, just to the public, I have been reading all of your letters that are coming on this subject. So just, I don't want people to think we're... Because we're not replying, we're not reading them. We, we are. I'm reading every single letter. It's it's a lot a lot of reading. <laughs> it's a lot of comments on this subject, and it's not easy. It is. It's just not easy making you know with with the changes in the governor's, you know, as Carolyn talked about the governor's, um, you know, requirements, and and I know our our office, you and Jen have been going crazy trying to plan this and make sure that everybody has access and, and it's Dick, and everybody. Dick and everybody has you know everything they need and yet we're still you know following the law and, and and doing the right you know making sure that we're providing the correct access to applicants and it's a lot of balancing for sure and uh, I thank you for all you're doing um, Jen and Casey on it that. has been and it's not just us nope, I mean I know. It, 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 it's been an, a heavy lift for all of us yep the it is. members of the zoning board yep. staff members council it's all a heavy this. lift to to make a significant change like this. All that but IT training that the members. It's happening yeah. across the state. Yep. Okay. All right. Anything else? Nope. Well, what um, else? We, oh, into Casey, what was um, uh, unanticipated? There was something. We had a new plumber. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, rate. okay. Here it is. Oh, alternate yeah. plumbing. Alternate plumbing person. Do we have any? Yeah, so we lost an alternate plumbing inspector and um, the building commissioner makes that appointment. And so he just wanted me to make sure that we clarify for the treasurer's office the pay rate for that position. It has been $38 an hour and we would like you to, to um, confirm that so that we can provide that information to both the new plumbing inspector and yeah, I think that's what we've been doing, right? We, we, it right is along. thirty-eight dollars an hour. Yeah, I did verify it that. It gets paid for by permits. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, do you need a motion and uh, make a motion yes, to please. to approve the pay rate, um, continuing with the pay rate that has been the thirty-eight dollars an hour for our um, alternate plumbing inspector? Um, Dave Wolf from second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Yeah, hi, Dave Wolfram. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Um, Casey, did you have anything else to report that we didn't cover? I do. I have a couple of things, actually. Okay. Um, okay, so two things. Carolyn had asked me about the status on the Oxford property. So we developed a site survey, and it's, the plan's been reviewed, and we have one change in that survey that needs to be made, and I've advised the... Um, a company who I can I can see the guy's name in my head. Heritage I can't, I can't Heritage Surveys. That's yep. what it is. Um, I've advised him, but the select board. So in order to sell a property, we have to deal with Merrigan Way, and Merrigan Way, the board decided way before I got here to increase the um, size of Merrigan Way by an additional 50 feet. So we have to lay out Merrigan Way again, and. We have to do a layout hearing, Case. then submit the definitive plan to the planning board and the town clerk, and then submit a, prior, a certain time period prior to town meeting, submit the um, town meeting article to request approval of that 
public way. Can I can I make a can I make a request to you, Casey, to have a, a public sure. hearing on the 9th of September for the hearing for the Merrigan Way? Yeah, let's, we got You can do that. that. Thank you, Casey. And then I didn't even get a chance to say it. <laughs> no, we got to move on it. So and then gonna... and then we'll have that ready for uh, annual town meeting, which we're hoping to have on. No, we can we could do that I mean, on a special. I, town I mean, meeting. special town meeting. Yeah. I'm sorry. On the I think you were thinking the 22nd of September, right? Uh, the 21st. Oh, 21st I, is I a Monday. A couple of days. Let's see what everybody says. Okay. Yep. Um, the 21st. The only we're pretty close to being able to submit for free cash certification. At right. Point. I know, but um, Casey, I'm just a little nervous if we start. I mean, I think uh, the problem is every, uh, there's quite a few communities are doing the month to month, and I'm not sure how long it's going to take for us to get our free cash certified. She's thinking quick. I talked to her really? today about it. Yeah. Oh, she said okay. everything's been coming back really fast. She's going to she's going to turn it in Thursday. With free cash. She's going to put it really? in on Thursday. Yeah. Really. So, Next okay. Thursday. Because people are doing month to month. Yeah, so she, she so said uh, right. she feels pretty good about it. All right, well then and let's go like for it. it looks like we're going to have a healthy number going forward. Yeah, we should. Well, we one got six that. about. We got that. Um, How much? 400 and. One six. One million six hundred. We, we got um, 444,000. 500 and something was helpful. COVID. I think not yeah. even this year. Next, we're going to be a rough couple budget years, so it's oh, going to be good to have. So, this year is we can good, but tax yeah. some of those next capital things we put off in the spring. And Jeff Upton did uh, send, and I know you probably saw the email. He sent just for clarification, updating that five-year plan a little bit. Perfect. So Perfect. Um, it looked good. And yeah, Casey, um, I saw your email. I had asked you um, what the, was the heck that was going on with the fur cog because we haven't heard those culverts. Can you keep bugging them, please? You saw that email yeah. response, though, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, I can, but they've been slowed down by COVID, too. Yep. I know, but um, we, we need to get our culverts organized because I think we're going to have an infrastructure um, bill coming come to Congress by February. We need, to get, can, we need to get on the stick here. Can we hit a couple of... We didn't do... Yeah. No. Uh, subjects either right um, well, we announcements or anything no we didn't do announcements and I we just, didn't do public comment i, I before oh, yes. we do public comment i just wanted to hit on the sewer um, oh yes Ke so uh, go so ahead. they're uh, i talked to dave uh prickett today they're uh, moving right along doing great um waterline industries is the uh contractor we have doing this secondary clarifier right now and um they're they're doing great excellent to work with everybody's been very pleased um we hope they bid on the big project, so that would be great. Um, they, you know, they know our plant now, and um, it'd just be really good if they can, they can bid on that too, and we get them as well. Um, so that secondary uh, clarifier, the old one's out, the new one's going in. They've got you know more weeks to go there, but but things are on schedule and going really well. Um, he's about two weeks out from a pretty decent sized sewer meeting that we can pull us all back together in on the plan. Um, the design and all that stuff. So I think that's that's moving along. Um, he just he said um, a lot of other things kind of finished up. So they're really focusing on getting us going um, early. And he thinks if we can, you know, he's trying for end of year for that, so that we could get bids out. He's really pushing his guys to get a little early. He said if we can get out early, just the contractors are kind of. He thinks it'll put us in a good spot if we can get out to bid early. Oh, I do too, because once the infrastructure bill comes, everybody's going to be tied mm -hmm. up. That and uh, right now, people are not really sure because everybody's doing the 112 budgets. Things are on hold here and there. So if we could really get in and get a good good bid, I think we'll be in good shape. So that that seems pretty good. And I really want to get started on, on uh, Old Deerfield. We okay. need to get moving on that to figure out what we're going to do how bad it really is and uh, get people understanding that that's another thing we have sewer rates coming up a couple months you know we usually do in the fall um, so I told him that we really need to look at the cost of doing that um, that assessment well, I think we're gonna have some help on that and then to really start planning for any other costs that need to be put in to get this project rolling I mean we need to be ready shovel ready this stuff when when something happens and I'm hoping, and he knows that we want to do the MVP. Yes, he's got that all ready to go. April. So when okay. it, whenever it happens, yeah, it we're ready. Be, it will be like in April. That'd be great. 
Um, so. Dave, is there anything you want? No. Okay. Um, Casey, I just had um, a Board of Health question. Did you um, um, talk to Lisa? Are, did you nail down that list for 2800 and I think it's $36 or whatever it is that Frontier EDS has um, with Lisa? Because that, that's due Friday that list, how we want to spend Lisa the money. Lisa and I did talk about it. Yeah, Lisa and I did talk about it. Okay. Um, she had, we had set up our account with McKesson, and I didn't get a chance to talk to her today. So I'll send her an email and ask her to give me a call. Well, um, we had a wonderful walk through um, the highway garage, because we're going to do the October 4th flu clinic as our, um, in case we get COVID vaccines in the winter time we're going to do this indoors so we did a uh, thank you to the police department and um, Kevin the highway department Liz Kugler who's Board of Health in Hatfield who was our operations officer Tolly Stark our new operations officer and myself we met on Monday we did a wonderful walkthrough I think we're going to have a great layout um, but we're going to need additional tables we need about 15 tables and we want the flexibility if the weather's nice we're going to move um, form collection on the outgoing outside and the form collection for triage um, outside um, but we're going to bring them in have the ability to bring them in if it's you know poor weather or really cold mm -hmm. so um, right but we need additional tables more than we have now how did you, how did right. you make out did you get hail signs to um, do our mask and uh, social distancing signs the additional signs we need well i thought i thought furcog had all those no not 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 our drive through ones oh i see i see i see we need them in our lime green um people will be happy we have lime green people so there's no question lime green what our, our black with lime, lime green. green lime green and black is our colors yeah i don't think you I remember didn't. i missed that meeting i said I sent a, um, a request for a quote to oh. another company. Thanks, Jen. Okay, great. Was having, we were having trouble getting hearing back from Hale. Okay. okay. Well, the um, signage, we need the signage. We, that order has to go in, but that's a different pot of money. That is FERCOG money. FERCOG has that money for us, but it's a different pot than I'm talking about the MAPCO money. That $2,800 we have to have that spent by August 31st so we need that needs to go in to get approval to DPH this by Friday it's gonna it's due okay okay all right so it's tables I know we need extra gloves um, Masks. Ma well we can get more syringes and more masks stuff like that whatever it takes to use up the twenty eight hundred dollars I don't, I don't, we need to spend every dime otherwise it just reverts back to the state well we certainly need stuff so i know great um so sorry about that that just needs to get we just need to make sure sit down that um you know lisa's signed off on it okay yep. just make sure she, she yep. get, we're getting those plastic tables like BJ's tables that are that we can handle. We can move ourselves. Yeah, some of them are wicked heavy. Yeah. Do you have public comment you want to do? Okay, now uh, we'll we'll open up for public comment. Okay. Is there any public comment? Oh, I see Anna Lee over there. Hi, Anna Lee. Hi, Anna Lee. Oh, here's somebody who would like to serve. <laughs> Anna Lee, would yeah, you like to I serve on the planning apologize. board? There's, I'm in Maine, and there's a powerboat that just went by. Oh, I'm it sorry. looks beautiful behind you. It's gorgeous uh, there. Yeah, I'm ready to get into the mosquitoes. Um, yes, I appreciate Chief Petroik's presentation tonight and the commitment of the chief and the select board to transparency <clears> and accountability. That, that really means so much. I'm hopeful that at the next select board meeting, not tonight, but at the next select board meeting, you could tell residents how we as residents can have more public involvement in actually asking the police questions and reviewing priorities for the budget. I mean, I think, you know, some of the examples, police anti-bias training, 
community, action boards. I would just like an opportunity for the police chief to be able to address resident questions mm -hmm. directly and in an open, transparent manner. As sure. You yeah. Do you, and, and, you, and you can always call him. You know that, too. So he's open for any phone call. Uh, but if you wanted it, yeah, I, I thought we would, once we got through some of this stuff and see what the state bill was, we would then have, you know, like a public discussion on on that, and then of course all through, all through budget season, we'll have a lot of discussions too. So we'd love your participation in that as I, well. I would sincerely yeah. um, anticipate more um, discussion, only because we, you know, whatever comes out of the state house bill will have some impact. We'll have to have some compliance, I'm sure, of something, but also we have really made an effort to be more cutting edge and be more proactive. So we need to figure out what we will do to be more proactive in, in a change environment and, um, or well, how do we continue what we're doing? And also, you know, and to really look at that because, you know, whatever comes out of the state may be more regressive than what we're already doing. You know, we tend to be a very progressive board, you yeah. know, board here and, 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 police um, department itself. So we just want to make sure that it's not going to kind of hinder the things that we're already working on. So as you know, I, I, I strongly believe in community policing and it's really policing of our neighbors. But as we've had Carol and Ashley say there and and chief, you know, I mean, if you ever read the police logs, there really is a tremendous amount of things happening in town. and you know, our number one priority is for people to truly feel safe mm. in our town. So whatever we can do to be, make people be safe, but also feel safe. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's two different things to be safe, but also to feel safe. And, um, I mean, John, John has been extremely proactive. Our officers, you know, mandatorily are out patrolling all the time. No one sits in the station and just burns time. People are really active. They know the community. They know what is right and what doesn't look quite right. And um, I mean, we just, we do, we have turnover, but it's turnover because people are get, going, moving on to really big jobs or federal jobs or, you know, other state jobs. But so the the core that we have is always really um, energetic and vital, and I, I I don't know. I mean, I'm really impressed. So um, for the most part, when I I go to homeland security meetings or or state meetings and have exposure to other departments, I'm I'm truly shocked, uh, and I always think, oh my God, thank God, we have you John. know. I, I can stand behind our department 100%. And we, and we do want to listen, you know, continue to listen to, you know, residents, um, persons of color, you know, minorities. To, how are they feeling? What, what kind of interactions? What, what would you, else would you like to see? How, how can we have a better dialogue? You know, I know we, we've talked with Lou a couple times and some others. Um, how can we have a more active dialogue so they're really aware of what we do now? and. Um, you know, people just may not be aware. A lot of people don't come to our budget meetings or any of that stuff. So it'd be good to, you know, have those discussions on what we do now, what our priorities are, and, you know, what our limitations for budget are too. But, um, but yeah, we want to listen. Always learn, always listen. So I mean, thank you. A, there's always Annalie. other opportunities. So always can learn for improvement. Yep. So it's not, I mean, no one is not listening. Yep. Great. So thank you for that. Great. I think especially if the Thanks. If the public can be involved as the budget is being created, not of course just when it's being presented. Yeah, always. At Great. any meeting, you're always welcome. There's fine, and really, it's it's coming to the finance committee meetings, select board meetings, you know, town capital meeting. improvement planning, you, town, town you know, meeting. all that stuff. But really, it's the finance committee um, because usually the department heads will discuss with us what they want to do, and then they also present to the finance committee too. So those are the areas when we're going through that stuff, um, it's really important to be there and talk about that thing, that stuff. Great. All right, that's, that's Great. helpful to know. Thank yeah, you very thank much. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Annalie, for taking oh, time out you, of your vacation. Uh, just while I've got you, um, up on your nice spot there, Maine. Um, there, I don't know if you heard earlier, there was that spot open on the FERCOG planning board. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, I, it, I just 
actually, I just texted uh, John Wade. Oh, good. Yeah. So just good. anybody. Fill uh, me in about it. Yeah, fill you in, and then if, if anybody else, if you talk to any other members um, that are interested. So just wanted to get that plug in. So thank you, Annalee. It, <laughs> thank you for all you're doing. It's not a it's not a huge commitment. Payback. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> it's not a huge commitment. It's once a month, but. Um, uh, it's not even because I think it's just it's uh, well, six maybe, times a year. It's every, yeah, it's, it's every two months. It gets no. better. It's only two. It's times. every two months. It's every no. two months. But um, hey, Trevor's right. I forgot that they yeah. they down. It used to be once a month, but um, it, it's just it's what they do is is review and talk about issues that are countywide. You know, beyond town border kind of issues, like say the pipeline or um, you know somebody's yeah. doing something on the highway or you know whatever. Okay. So our next meetings are August 26th, September 9th, 23rd, October 7th. You want me to put it on my calendar right Yes, now. please, huh? write it down. So we've got, yeah, uh, so uh, August 26th, September 9th, 23rd, October 7th, 21st, November 4th, and 18th, December 2nd, 16th, and 30th. Somehow Casey came up with um, not, no impact on... Thanksgiving and Christmas. So yes. thank you, Casey. <laughs> so it wasn't a lot me, of those, it was the and, calendar. And I a lot of those yeah. and figured it out and mm. put it in a list. And a lot of those October on, you know, were a lot of budget meetings. So yeah. we're, you know, we're start working on, on the budget pretty quick here. So um, seems we're gonna have crazy, to put a little bit more effort into it this year because yeah. we're gonna have some tough times, I think. Yep, for sure. Um, but we're okay. I want everyone to know we're yeah, okay right we're, now. We're doing really good right we're, now. Yeah. All right. If there's no other public comment, any anybody else have anybody anything else? to say? Chris Harris. Hi, Chris. Oh, Chris. Hi. Yeah, I just wanted to say thanks for this meeting. I've listened to the whole meeting, and uh, I don't really have any specific comments other than to thank people for all their efforts. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Always Actually, love to see you here. Uh, I know everyone wants to go, but Chris um, came up with this fabulous idea. Um, he talked about Montreal and how they um, put out a platform. Uh, Chris, why don't you just talk to people for outdoor dining, what they do, that we could do here. They just do a seasonal thing in the summer every year in a key strip in the center of the city where they, they get platforms built with awnings and, um, and uh, umbrellas for outside dining and expands the outside arena outside the restaurant gets a lot more hype going on in the city etc and it probably fits into this whole COVID-19 yeah. social distance and things like that because probably we'll be dealing with the same thing next summer so I mean it's not the not a straightforward overnight thing but uh, there's other communities that have done this and it works and it generates a lot of business and it generates a lot of energy in downtown area. Yeah, I think that's great. So I, I told um, Chris that we're going to be hearing, we can't do much um, in front of, um, you know, on Elm Street or anything because that's part of, you know, state highway kind of stuff. But what we can do is Leary Lot, we're going to find out about the Leary Lot mm -hmm. in the next couple of weeks, um, whether we get funded for the green parking lot implementation. So if we get the Leary Lot, there's that, pocket park we were putting in the back to um, connect with BBC, it would be, we could put out, have removable mm -hmm. platforms and have outdoor dining and that would and be like- And a place for a band. And pay like, a place that would be for, awesome. Oh man, that would be really exciting. So I actually great. got really excited when I read your email. I'm just really apologize for taking so long to respond. I. You know, I, it wasn't a simple response, so well, I had to think about it. With the bands, I just wanted to thank Sue Antonellis, too, in the rec department. They've been doing these summer concerts out here. Yes. I mean, you know, those were great. People really enjoyed them. And they had like a, a tractor trailer trailer and they sat up on there and everybody had their chairs all spread out and wonderful stuff. And if we could kind of, we need to do more of that. So. Get involved with the 350th. You know, there's a lot to do in town if anybody wants to get together. Um, and you know stuff, what? So. One of the things um, I was hoping people would be interested in, I, I know the Dick Group is working very hard on um, working with the schools for curriculum. Mm -hmm. It would be wonderful if we had a Dig representative on the 350th because 
um, we have uh, Peter Thomas, uh, who is um, Les Thomas's son, who, you know, he grew up here. He's a really wonderful historian. And he's trying to work, um, do um, projects with the school and, and you know, mm -hmm. bring history alive. And it would be wonderful if we had um, dig representatives on the 350 to work with yeah. um, Peter to try to, you know, put history in perspective and mm -hmm. come up with a different curriculum and events um, that would be very helpful for the current um, environment. Yeah. And, um, awesome. So that would be really wonderful. So anyone that's really interested, I would sincerely hope that they would want to volunteer. Okay. Motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Have, be safe.